Good evening, America, and all the other lesser nations. It's your boy Donnie, former president of the United States, and really the best president, quite frankly. I'm here tonight to tell you not to be like China, and instead donate to the OC of podcast. Don't just get from me, the greatest and most loved president of all time. Listen to these other satisfied customers. I think of the host of the OCA podcast as my five and a half additional children. And like a good American father, I support them by donating to their only fans. If only I had started donating earlier, Uncle Ben might still be alive. I've never met my real dad, but that's okay. Because after donating all my savings, the host agreed to be my new dad's. I want the change out of his coin purse to donate to the podcast. No, not my coins! Yes, your coins. It's time to do, 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 donate to the Patreon. All right. The OCA podcast needs my money more than my sister Serenity. Donate. President Trump off on his line there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the OCA podcast. I am your host, the Anime Collector. Joining me tonight is a footnote. Fuck. Footnote. <laughs> hey, my connection's acting up. Oh, what else is new? <laughs> also, Reese. <laughs> my connection's not acting up. Oh. Hand off to the next person because I'm, I'm busy trying to get the stupid header image in here because I didn't do it. Okay, long. so we got this guy who's a. Uh... Russian. This guy, yeah, random eleven. You guys, somehow you guys I still got here. Good at this. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and Ronsu is here. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. For fuck's sake! <laughs> I did not preload this. How's everybody doing? Reese, take it away. <laughs> I am doing absolutely fan fucking tastic. I did not sleep for shit last night, but my foot feels pretty fucking good today. And me so. either. <laughs> I hope I hope it shows. <laughs> I hope it shows tonight. I, yeah, I have really downed good. an entire G fuel and I am thirsty right now, but I feel pretty fucking good right now. Was it a peach uh, rings? Because <laughs> yes, it is. So Damn right. We're not sponsored, by the way. We're not sponsored not by G Fuel, but we Josh, not I yet. Have blushed. What do you feel? Peach rings with Sonic on it. Limited edition, but it's uh not really limited edition because it's been here for like how many years now? Right. <laughs> I hope they slowly just remove that part. <laughs> Glad yeah, that uh, anime collector's back. Oh, it feels it like it's been a long time. That, so, yeah. It's been like three weeks since I did like a dedicated show where I was there. Um I was in Vegas. I stole this glass. I'm going to be drinking whiskey from it. (laughs) There's like this thing on the Vegas Strip where people just leave glasses everywhere, right? Um, Because why in Vegas, all of the uh, hotels are connected, right? So you can walk from one all the way down the Strip wherever you want to go. So you never technically leave the building. So I think that the idea is to avoid public drunkenness, you just stay indoors throughout the whole walk, right? So you can just drink wherever you want. And um, yeah, so people just leave the glass somewhere, you know? And I don't know how they sort them, if there's just like an honor system, how it gets back to the, maybe there's a mismatch of like just tons and tons of glasses at all the places. I don't know. So um, what you're doing is make it work. some poor bastard left his cup, left his glass, yeah, well, <laughs> and so, you swiped it. And he's no, like, no, 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 no. This is go? my glass. This is my glass. So what happened was um, my boss loves playing craps. Um, and so after dinner, I had already had like three drinks. And then they went to the bar like in the strip right next to the um, to the craps table they were going to go to. And they bought another round of drinks and then he just slid his drink in front of me instead of drinking it. And then he walked away and I'm like, they're going to just leave me here. So I just took it with me. Right. And I just drank it and I didn't want to leave anywhere because it was a nice glass. So what I did. Just take it home with you because it was a nice glass. Yeah. Well, what I I mean, (laughs) what's nice about it is I like the way you can hold it like this. 
because it's like got that s sort of smaller rounded base. Yeah, yeah. You can but, hold it in uh, the cup of your hand. What I ended up doing is uh, I I bought a Yeti Nano for podcasting on the road, and I just put a shirt around it and cupped it <laughs> onto the mic part. <laughs> so, so it was nice and cozy all the way home. <laughs> And that is how I got it through customs. <laughs> Dude, that thing's so small you could shove it in your ass. <laughs> well, no, have you tried this? Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm we we need to know for science. Is this I, I something you do on a regular a, basis? I think there's an article with a Chinese boy who's trying it. Can we about? <laughs> anyway, so uh so I'm trying to I'm trying to do a stream today from uh through opera. Um and it, I for once, am not failing the uh, the upload with the um, local recordings. That's good. Also um, not anyway. sponsored. So, uh, Reese, I, I feel like there was a segment that you wanted desperately oh. for us to do. Uh, Would you like to take it away? So, last podcast. We're dying for these secret wisdoms. Because last podcast, Lance uh, taught us how to woo a woman who's washing her titties in a co-ed bath. <laughs> Ted Lewis. <laughs> oh also apparently I'm having it, because black it was... rice I'm having black rice in my uh in my poke bowl in honor of Chojin month. The, the, the podcast that was apparently so terrible because I was hosting. I thought you guys did great. I shouldn't have interrupted so many times. <laughs> God that last segment with the fucking voyeurs getting caught. Oh I cried. I laughed so hard. <laughs> that was so good. Anyway, All right. so I, I I just pulled this idea out of my ass. Like, let's come up. Let's all come up with one good pickup line, and let the audience decide which one wins. Yeah, I should have made a poll, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> so I hope you go ahead. I hope everybody's got their. Uh, <laughs> Oh I'm no, 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 no one was thing. properly. I hope everybody's got there. I'm not down. logged in. On I was this. even told it probably wasn't happening. <laughs> Wait, right, yours, was, yours was you have beautiful hair. You used yours. Sorry. <laughs> we have to top that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't remember ever giving a pickup line. It was pretty late. <laughs> I, I don't ever remember giving a pickup line. I do remember the fact that I was, you know, put on the spot with once again another situation that I have to deal with impromptu. <laughs> you guys are always setting me up, assholes. Uh, I think you set yourself up most of the time, and you just have to deal with the consequences <laughs> of your own actions. I mean, it'd be really, it'd be really nice to get some heads up here, Reese. Uh, it would be nice for us to get really heads up on you, you not, not being prepared. <laughs> I literally it's can't not enough. I'm not the only person I'm the last person to know anything. I'm the only person here who doesn't you know, get a direct hold up, link hold to up. this. Let, Lance, we will follow through with that. You will just you? have to give us a heads up on what you're about to say. <laughs> 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 oh, I can only put four people in the poll. No, I asked if you could put six on there. He said no. Random yeah, eleven said he's random eleven. <laughs> well, hold up. That he was out by default. Oh. And, okay, and so I, yours doesn't count, Brad, because you cheated. Yeah, because you use chat GPT to write I yours. All the time. That's not true. I just that was just to get us rolling. <laughs> J.K. <All right>. Um, <laughs> you guys ready? Go for it. Lance, you're up. Put them first. Oh, oh put, put, them first. put them first. Okay, okay. It's really not that good, but hey, girl, are you a Nintendo? Let's smash. <laughs> As in Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Okay. Wrong but system. That's a, that's a game for for them. Pick up I know that. it's him. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't I thought that was going me. a completely different direction. We were, we were told these were switch I was up the roles. I could swear these were supposed to be cringe. So if you wanted cringe, I'm shaking all over. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm not proud of that. Like, I, I just don't <laughs> think of it. glad to hear it. You, you started Please. off, hey, girl, and then you, like, you ended up with the Smash Bro. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't say Smash Bro because that would be a completely been different funnier. individual. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have just been your tomboy friend. 
<laughs> yeah, I gotta get back in there. Pull out my inner Frenchman here. Oh. Hey, baby, are you a boulanger? Because you make my croissant into a baguette. <laughs> are you a what? A fr- French for a female baker, boulanger. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you mean an. <laughs> You mean a fucking alchemist? <laughs> Boulanger. By putting by putting this, you know what? Never mind. Ow! I hit the. <laughs> I just fucking hit. Ow! So my pickup line works like ninety percent of the time. It's uh, hey, the kids are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you showed that on Twitter. Like ninety percent success rate. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say get drunk at a bar. I did get offered to for some company then that night I was drinking in Vegas. <laughs> some drunk girl came up to me and my friend who I, who I work with. And she, she started uh, asking us a bunch of questions and then eventually she stopped beating around the bush and said, you looking for some What's company that? tonight? And I'm like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seemed like you it seemed like you were pretty proud of it. I'm just like, if you're getting laid that often, why would you be happy about a hooker? No, it wasn't a hooker. It was just some random chick. Are she did sure not have the trappings. A... She was a thought, not a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah. a desperate hoe walking up and down the Vegas Strip looking for anyone. I don't know what you call that other than a, yeah, well, yeah, hoe would be fine. <laughs> ho ho work. All right, so random uh, eleven and green line. You guys still have uh... random eleven. <laughs> come on, come on, random eleven. Come on, tell, admire her. Just picture her feet, yeah. and tell us what first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I already told just you, Doctor Cinderella. I'm not crying on that boot. Just, just tell her you have nice feet, and it's like the pay drop, man. I, I cheated. I I just got chat to be to suggest. Oh. Hey girl. Hey hey girl. Uh uh you play Sonic cuz those feet are stank. <laughs> <laughs> uh so so chat to be suggests are you a magician because whenever I look at you everyone else disappears. That's pretty, pretty good. Smooth. That was actually that was actually not stupid. Speaking I felt like that, that. I felt like that could have been one at a Yu-Gi-Oh convention in Vegas. When oh, I was boy, going back go. to the uh, when I was going back to the airport to fly home, mm. one of the buildings in Vegas, the hotels, had this huge David David Copperfield ad, and David Copperfield has this like look that he does, like I am an untrustworthy douchebag, <laughs> you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of face. And so at, the the building is shaped like an L. So I'm seeing his face, and it's scrolling and unveiling the rest of this ad that says David Copperfield real big. And I get to the end, and there's a fucking (laughs) T-Rex. What on earth is this an advertisement for? And for my next trick, the dinosaurs are back. (laughs) Uh, There's also a UFO. (laughs) I just couldn't understand what was going on with the ad. Greenline, you got a pickup line for us? Yeah, uh, only problem is it can only be used in December. It's um, uh, hey, uh, hey, can, can I, can, hey, can I get a photo? Well, because I, I need to show Santa what I want for Christmas. Come on! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> wow! <All right. laughs> so, uh, new I mean, poll. See, see, Who's was see, the worst? You see, the thing is, is like <laughs> that that hurt because that felt like it came from an innocent place. Almost, almost like my hair comment, which uh, you know, watch it for the, for the thing. Uh, all right, so I right, guess who had I'm the up worst now. one? I, I'm voting green. Yeah. We've, <laughs> we've, 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 we've saved, we've saved, we've uh, saved me for last. All right, because I was apparently I was straight up supposed to come up with a pickup line off the right, bat last hear... podcast. So, all right, Please tell me. All right. <clears throat> hey, baby, you got a nice kit there. Want to come backstage and let me play your bongos? Well, I, th- I think this is cringe? the worst podcast hmm. segment. We right? are now 15 <laughs> minutes in. I think I'm just going <laughs> to everybody's time. 
I think. And yet, and yet, is... this is probably the this is probably going to be the most watched thing that's ever happened on this podcast. Yeah. Which one, like, has a pickup line ever uh, sealed the deal before in history? Two <laughs> uh, percent. <laughs> it's the magic words that get uh, a woman in bed with you. Yes. <laughs> All right, now that I finished fucking updating the doc. <laughs> I thought you were going to say fucking your meal. I was like, well. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what I heard you smacking. Say, clearly. Yeah. Hey, girl, are you from the Duelist Kingdom? You should let me through that gate guardian. <laughs> All right. God, why Here am I picturing go. a chastity belt with Footnum's deck on top of it? Hey, hey, Brad, I, next time uh, I'm in public, I should use your pickup line. Hey, the kids are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'll work. Well. Officer, right here, please. Everybody here, let me know how how any of those pickup lines worked out for you. Uh, now I, I am. I will be right back. I got. This is probably the worst sales seg segment ever, considering that was such trash. But if you want to support us and a, and a solemn promise for me that we will never do that segment again, join the Indian Podcast Patreon. There's also the Anime Collector Patreon where you can just give me money because you like me more. And there's also uh, ways to support that, us at ocapodcast.com slash support. That, that part went out to you, Mega Mug. Got up and shut up. <laughs> The cool 2T also threatened to leave last podcast, but didn't. <laughs> Good thing for Well, them. now that you're back on, he again. won't be able to give us donations of $2 and leave. <laughs> yeah. All right. My wife turned on the heater, and now I have to strip off all the extra layers I put on. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So first things first, I would like to let you guys know, there is a new video from Greenline. Uh, and yes. if I could whet your appetite, it opens with... It's hard. It, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, he says Satoshi weird too for some reason. Oh, I Sorry, need to get excuse a, me. A, an AI to change. Hold it up. It, it, is is that is, is that, that this one? I'm try for it. Oh no, that's the wrong one. For one reason or another, I find myself coming. That was the one before. Uh, I I remember the context of that one. He was trying to say, "I find myself." Uh, uh, becoming oh, yeah. more, but he said coming instead of becoming. <laughs> I find myself coming. Mm. JG says he met the the voice of Nurse Joy. So mm. it's been three weeks since I have done. A... Well, you should watch the video then, <laughs> shouldn't you? No, no, it's been three weeks since I've <laughs> since I've been on the podcast in a meaningful way. And uh, there have been several Me Tooings. <laughs> so let's jump right in. So Mike Haimoto has been Me Tooed by a former girlfriend who's also a voice actor. Before we jump into this, though, I'd like to point out Anime News Network had this brilliant way of highlighting this. Thorfinn dub voice actor Mike Haimoto accused of domestic abuse and sexual assault. Now, this is a great way to do it, considering there's two different dubs for Vinland well, Saga. They, they revised the headline. They didn't even name Mike Haimoto in the headline when they when this article <laughs> originally came out. Yeah. Because so nobody people... knew his name. Yep. Thorfinn, dub voice actor, accused of domestic abuse. Great job, Lindsay. I, I feel like they probably tried to do that for SEO, but... As uh, someone on Twitter pointed out, it's like, so I guess, uh, yeah, Vic Mignogna, they wanted to rail so hard and make it like, you know, his name front and center, his character, everything. But this one, they're dancing around it. Uh, because he's a feminist. For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who's the other Thorfinn voice actor that's getting uh, attacked? Alex Lee. Alex Lee. Yeah, he's been getting shit over his uh, domestic abuse and sexual assault. He never did. Yeah. So, jumping right in. Another Western anime voice actor has been accused of domestic abuse and sexual assault. So, this one, claiming to be a feminist, big shocker, has been hit with accusations of domestic abuse and sexual assault, with the claims against Mike Haimoto sure to leave many unsurprised as such feminists usually turn out to be hypocrites. 
They mean male feminists specifically. I mean, all feminists. But in this case, it's a male feminist. In case it wasn't clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a man. <laughs> English dub voice actor Mike Haimoto, who has done work for Vinland Saga and Verm what is the Kinso no Vermeil? We're skipping it. Was accused of carrying out domestic abuse and sexual assault on his former girlfriend, Avery Smithhart, <laughs> as claimed in a 50 page document. 50 goddamn motherfucking pages. <laughs> Why? Why is it always so Oh, like Land of the Lusters. That's what's in What? Kiso Land no of the Lusters. No, no. Hoseki Nakuni is Land of the Lusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's uh, Cinnabar. Or whatever. In in um, Land of the Lusters, mm -hmm. yes. But I was asking about that. Anyway, so, um, yeah. So I just, I just like to point out. Now, I'm not going to read this thing. Um, pretty much all you need to know is uh, the literal first thing they say is I received my autism diagnosis near the end of 2021. <laughs> and then the, that's literally how they open it. <laughs> that's all you need to know. <laughs> now, <laughs> the other thing is that this is not a police report. <laughs> you're right. I was going to say it's a 50 page Google Doc. That was put out on public, tagging in Twitter and, and all that stuff. Curiously, was not made as a police report. So, take of that what you will. It seems to me like they're a little bit more interested in um, payback than they are in, you know, actually justice. seeing justice paid. Yeah. So, that's just, that, that's my read on it. Uh, I've read about one page of this so far and just can't. That's probably the way you get away with accusations nowadays is that you, you make just sober get both chat GPT, wants to read it. make me a, make me a long winded accusation uh, document and then no one will read it and actually see the details. And there you go. You got a rock solid case. I actually read Elliot Rogers manifesto for why he shot up San Francisco. <laughs> All right. So she alleges that in a three-year relationship with Mike Haimoto that ended in early 2022, um, she had a three-year relationship with him that ended in uh, early 2022, and that he would frequently prevent her from seeing friends and family, chose how she would dress, made up stories about himself, sexually assaulted her at, after a party, and other accusations. Where's the police report for that particular Damn, that's some, that, Look, I, I just want to say... Um, I'm not defending Mike Haimoto in any way. He seems like a douchebag. Um, but also, the accusations are seem like a lot of talk, you know? And starting the thing with, by the way, I was diagnosed as autistic, tells me... Um, in the opener, I, too? I've, I've, it just this screams to me. I received my autism diagnosis near the end of 2021... And that's then the opener. she broke up with him at the beginning of 2022, or the, they say at the end. Why would you open with that? It's so far in early 2020. Yeah. So this is what it tells me. She was diagnosed with autism, and then she said, "Oh my god, everything makes so much sense." <laughs> and then she looks back at her history and says, "Wow, that time I blurted out that bad joke in company when it was inappropriate. That was the autism talking. And that time that I did this, autism, right?" And whoa, when I didn't want it, it was it wasn't just the autism. It was the non-consent. I need to meet to him and I'm autistic, so it will take 50 pages. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how I read that. That's how it happened. Anyway, so um it, it, it it's it's possible that uh you can have a situation where both uh both parties have some sort of like bad part in this whole situation. Like one, one could be telling half truths, and then the other was kind of like a complete ass in some ways. So I can see that being the case. Look, nobody's perfect, and I'm being a little bit harsh on Avery here, only because, again, the optics of this look like payback, not justice. <laughs> you know. But uh, is the response uh, going to be? I will have autism as well. 
I'm I'm taking this moment to come out as a gay man. <laughs> we no 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 no. no I have a, we have autism. Yes, we both we struggle by, with autism because we, because we go by they them. Okay. Or no, we you can't say struggle, have, right? Struggle would oh, be quite no. bad. So we both are blessed with autism. <laughs> anyway, so you... <coughs> kill me. <coughs> God damn it. <laughs> The rice went down the wrong pipe. <coughs> My lungs are being raped was it by the, the Jojo was rice. It the, oh, God. <laughs> the rice was fields it, are getting their payback. <laughs> was it the Trojan rice that went down the throat? <laughs> it was. Let me show you on the doll where the Trojan rice touched me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to it. So anyway, um, a Google Drive document containing uh, the documented a Google Drive containing documents and interactions was uploaded by Smith Hart, and Mike Haimoto has not yet responded to the allegations. Smith Hart was initially charmed by Haimoto's, Haimoto's constant attention and gifts, but saw him become more aggressive, such as by throwing slash destroying dinner plates after she moved in with him, with the stress causing her to drop below 100 pounds for the first time in her life. Damn! Maybe she should have got out of that relationship <laughs> right there. Now, in the in the document, she she goes out. She specifically says, "For the first time in my adult life." Song Kaku Complex decided not to include that. <laughs> you know, she says, "Quote at the start of our relationship, he described his mother as his rock." Red flag. He spoke of her sacrifice with tremendous <laughs> admiration. Red flag. He bragged about growing up in a majority female household. Double red flag. He despised his father for what he did to his mother and declared himself a proud feminist. Ding, 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 ding. The alarm bell should be going off. <laughs> but after seeing how he treated his mother and sister, the hatred that roiled off of him nauseated me. I began to fear for my life as I caught a glimpse into my future. So it seems to me like we have one of those male feminists raised in a female matriarchy household uh, father not in sight. Uh, yeah, is that about right? We, we got that. Hmm. One woman, I was everything he'd ever wanted, and the next, I was the most disgusting thing he'd ever seen. Oh, so he's bipolar. You're you're shaming his uh, disorder. <clears throat> That's great. I wasn't allowed <laughs> to cry in front of him or show what he deemed any negative feelings. Yeah, Avery, good vibes only in this house. <laughs> 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 Feelings like anger, sadness, depression, anxiety, etc. At one point, he said, can't you cry somewhere else? Or maybe when I'm not here? Haimoto was also said to have made up outlandish stories about his past. Okay, once again, bipolar. Everything about this seems bipolar to me. Such as working in intelligence for the Marine Corps and the CIA. Being in physical conflicts and being discharged for disagreeing with the commanding officer. The male voice actor also explained he was suffering a mental disorder similar to dissociative identity disorder and was being assisted by a therapy team. Smith Hart investigated all of these stories and found them to be false. <laughs> Quote, I hired a private investigator to resolve the Marines mystery once and for all. To no one's surprise, my ex never served. Ever. He never even went to boot camp. The supposed phone call he received that triggered his, P his PTSD and multiple versions of himself never happened. Clutching his head and cycling in front of me was all an act to scare me from questioning him. This also meant he couldn't receive treatment at the veterans hospital. The therapy team didn't exist outside of a few visits to his original therapist. He wasn't seeing his therapist for combat trauma or a disorder similar to dissociative identity disorder. Why well, would he have combat trauma if he was supposedly an intelligence officer? Right. <laughs> the trauma was the abuse he suffered at the hands of his mother. <laughs> <laughs> So Haimoto said the cycling was prompted by an alleged phone call from a former military comrade regarding a violent incident that supposedly occurred while Haimoto was enlisted. <clears throat> Hold on. 
they're talking like there's actual evidence in here. All I see are trigger warnings. <laughs> I'm Avery Smithheart, and I'm a survivor. I'm an actor, and I refuse to give up on my dream. Acting makes my heart sing, and I won't be silenced any longer. Who is keeping her quiet, I wonder? Okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. Oh, uh, Can you uh, cite that, Avery? Can you cite where you found all this information on your ex? Can you give us Personal, your contact she had a private. She had a private investigator. We were supposed to yeah, take his yeah. word for it. What's his yeah, name? Can, we, can you give us the contact info of this private yeah. investigator just to see I'd like if to they follow exist? Up. Find Just out to if, see it's if your they even exist at all or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, look I, again. I I do think that uh, I do think that he uh, probably isn't such a good guy, but this is like the one thing about this that I believe is the autism diagnosis because <laughs> this is the most autistic way to me too somebody. <laughs> Amongst the Google Drive files, Smithheart allegedly has evidence that Michael Rudd, Haimoto's real legal name, has no records on file at the National Personnel Records Center, which receives military records after an enlisted person is discharged, retired, or deceased. Haimoto was said to cycle between different versions of himself and wouldn't, re <coughs> and wouldn't recollect what he had previously said or done. And Smithheart asserted this was an act so he could have a relationship with another woman at the time. Wow. So. So he cheated the balls. on her. <laughs> like, legitimately, <laughs> just kind of impressed a little bit, honestly, that women are so emotionally, like, needy. Like, they not, that's a bad way to phrase it, but they. They require an emotional connection so severely that they would fall for something that's like an excuse that lame. <laughs> you know? I think the pickup lines might actually work on some. <laughs> <laughs> Smithart was instructed to, to not tell anyone that they were dating and that they were only friends, as well as not to have her wedding ring on in public as it could threaten his career. S Smithart... Okay. There you go. Sorry. Smithart also asserted that after attending a director's birthday party with Haimoto, the man sexually assaulted her. Whoa. Wait, did they mean Haimoto? Or did they mean the director? Why would you phrase it like that? Quote, I wasn't allowed to stop until he was satisfied, until I assuage any residual bad feelings he might have. Smith Hart described Haimoto as a person who put up a positive demeanor in front of friends, co-workers, and her family, but would change around her. I remember him directing remote sessions, laughing and smiling, effusive, effusive with his praise. He was patient with the actors he worked with, speaking gently and calmly to them, only to turn around and shout at me that I poured coffee too loudly, she wrote. Haimoto was unsurprisingly part of the Kick Vic movement which sought the cancellation of Vic Mignogna after accusations of, of, of him abusing fan surface, though no definitive evidence was provided. So yeah, he said, this is likely going to start something, but I don't care. Guys, I love your support and I love supporting you. But if you want me to like something you tag me in, that don't also tag, uh, tag me in with guys like Vic. Just don't. I won't like it. And I won't support anything to do with him. So, they, huh? So, hey, hey, look, it's Ty, it's freaking Tangelo. <laughs> well, so, Vic is out thinking COVID is a joke. It is a joke. Uh, only a garbage human being would think the death of 180,000 Americans and 800,000 people worldwide would be worth joking about. <laughs> That's my uh, head canon of what he sounds like because I didn't watch anything he's in yet. No, knowing it was him. Anyway, um, anyway, so you can uh, you can check this out if you want. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, personally. No. We, um, we, I, we would have heard something by now. For sure. Hasn't yeah. been fired. Yeah. 50 pages weren't enough. <laughs> I'd love to know how much you had to pay that private investigator. I think it's quite funny that you went to that extent. Um, I hope that they both uh, get away from each other. They seem like they could both do better. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I don't care. He's not even... It's like Mike who, you know, like not important enough. Apparently he's in uh, My Hero Academia, though, World Heroes Mission. 
Does he voice somebody in? Uh, uh, is he a main see. character or is he just in the movie? I think he's like a like a movie original character or something. Yeah, to Anime News Network we go. Yeah, Serpenters. Yeah, throwaway villain. He was in Squid Girl. No, come on. Uh, My Hero Academia, the movie, as Serpenters. Oh. He's also in season five and six as not not named. Anyway, all right. So yeah, like I said, who gives a shit? Moving on to numero two. The English VA for Genshin Impact character Tainari. Is that how you spell is that how you pronounce Close it? enough. Uh is it Tikahanahari? <laughs> uh responds to grooming and underage sexual misconduct allegations. So after finding himself at the center of sexual misconduct scandal, English language Genshin Impact voice actor Elliot Gindy has issued a statement responding to the accusations leveled against him. What were they? Tell us what they were. An amateur voice well, actor. Uh, on the tweet, it has like, uh, there should be, it has each category like listed in bullet points. And I skimmed the doc. This tweet? Oh, come on. Uh, no, that's not the one. It was, it was an individual, not, uh, the official Genshin account. Well, if you find it, but uh, um, oh, there is a Google Doc. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I'll be back. It violated the terms of service. That's interesting. All right, so let's take that to archive. <laughs> a text document that violated the terms of service. What the fuck? Got it. Oh fuck. No, didn't get it. Oh no, that's it. Are there dick pics in here? Uh, no. no. You sure? <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's only screenshots of like the chats. Okay, so do you wanna do you wanna run us through? Yeah, I if I had the bullet points, I could go over each individual one. But um, okay, the go. TLDR of it is uh, like oh, uh, the there was a spectrum. Wow, he's asexual. There... Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> There, that means, there that, means was, that you just imagined all the all the perverted shit he was doing. <laughs> so so let let's be very clear. I skimmed, so mm -hmm. I could be missing like some some bombshells. But uh, based on some other things, uh, I'm I'm assuming I would have seen the the bombshells on the way. But um, but I'm just leaving it open that that what I'm saying could be completely stupid and make no sense. But from what I gathered, so he did confess to some things. So one of them was like he he smashed an underage person, of which uh, he he uh, he claims that he was unaware of the age though, and uh, like that led to one of the other claims of him you baiting with his own suicide or whatever, like uh, you know being like oh I'm gonna kill myself if blah 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 like manipulated that was one of the other claims so they, and okay. he, so just for clarification they said i was still 17 at the time it was about two weeks before my birthday so he didn't cross that magical finish line well um, i i was gonna that's what i was about to say is that even though that's that's supposedly the case 17 I mean, I guess unless in he's fact, in a state that's like 18. What state? Yeah, I was going to say, what whatever. state is that? Because a third of the it country... Could, the it could be Asian not even a crime, to... depending on where yeah. he's at. Even it, So even if it was unknowing, it's like there's a second layer of like, well, it might not even be a crime. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I don't play Genshin Impact and don't really care about this individual at all. And to no be one fair, really he, about the he's... Anyway. That's what I was gonna yeah, say. He he's not even quote unquote a main character in the new region. Like he's more prominent, but like he's not a, a character that you're gonna see recurring. He's who you as... cry. He's who you get when you cry losing your fifty fifty. Wow. I've done it you, a lot. You're telling me this guy had sex with a seventeen year old? Wow, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean, uh, and that's uh, yeah. Mm. So so was it his so child to, bride? <laughs> good God! Before I lose my train of thought of remembering all this stuff, so so uh, what is it? Yeah, so so 
in regards to that, it's like, okay, so he supposedly slammed a minor without knowing the age. And even though he doesn't know the age, it may or may not even actually be like an age of consent uh, uh, Might not crime even be or whatever. So, uh, but who knows? Maybe it is. But then he it falls back onto the, well, he didn't know. But then he was like talking about how much he hated himself. He was a monster, blah, blah, blah. Um, and Just that's what led to me, the sounds to me like he did know. Behavior. I don't know. Sorry, that, that, sounds, but, that sounds like a little bit of guilt right there because it, for him for him to say, I don't know, that would usually, I legitimately didn't know, that would usually clear a conscience. Like, look, well, no, no, no. You could know. find out. You could find out that wait, they were that age, and you could think that holy crap, I'm a monster. How but could I honest, ever have But an honest done soul that? going into that situation is going to have far less guilt because they're going to realize, yeah, I didn't know. But I'd also like to point out the bullshit. If someone is so immature that asking for their age is a turnoff, walk away. Real world advice. I digress. Here's some other real world advice. Don't fuck random people you meet on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Get He's married amazing. first, and this there will never go. happen to you. <laughs> um, okay, so and and uh what is it? He 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 admitted to supposedly using his uh suicidality as uh I get I don't know about a bargaining chip. Is that the oh, way is that, that they how described Mills? it? <laughs> Like, uh, they claimed that, but I didn't actually see any of that in the thing. Like I said, it sounded more like, oh my god, I'm gonna KMS, or whatever. I, I, or, I want a KMS after, like, uh, you know, uh, what I've done. Uh, so it didn't sound like he was actually, like, asking for something of, like, I'm gonna KMS if you don't do this. Or, like, I don't remember seeing anything of like that. Like I said, that there could the have been the bombshell I just missed by. But me, other than that, tell. he did, he did uh confess to that part um but outside of that uh i mean i don't think there was anything else i mean, maybe there was something else he admitted to but apart from being like oh i was in, maybe i was not mentally all there or in a dark place or something i don't i don't remember if that was part of it it's been a while since i freshly read it, but everything else everything else was just uh, it, it appeared to me that it was just someone talking to a mod on his server or, mm -hmm. or a server. So there's screenshots of him of of this individual saying, Yeah, he said this. And I'm like, oh, here's well, the, where's the screenshot of him here's saying the, that? Uh, here's the bullet points. A pedo, okay, a so, transphobe, so, a sexist, so, a groomer, an ableist. Okay, so, so the, the pedo thing we went over. Transphobe is that he supposedly was making comments about uh someone that transitioned, uh, which Okay, uh, is that something you get fired for? I don't know. Sexist? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think that was also bundled in the comments of like someone talking to a mod saying he said this. It's like, where's the screenshots of him saying that? If you're on Discord, right? What's the context? Uh, that's where that's where well. things get a bit a bit weird for me. Is that I I'm kind of sketched about like why did you not provide the damning like direct him messaging that or whatever it's possible for um, them that the damning information could be being uh censored in the case in the case of bringing it forward because it might offer context i'm just playing devil's advocate in this one moment like if they don't if they're not showing what actually happened it might offer a context and we all know that context is king that that's what i'm getting at yeah. is that well, the reason they're not showing it is because it probably shows well either it doesn't exist or it will show that that's not actually the case um, so then sexist, uh, groomer, once again, he claimed they didn't know the age and then ableist. Uh, when I hear that, that just makes it sound like, a, oh, he said arsler or something like no, that. No, honestly, like, so let me, let me, let me just make my statement on the me tooings from this podcast clear. Pedophiles, abusers, people with bad intentions. They get into industries that let them prey on their targets. Like Disney. Okay. You're going to try out, yes, like Disney, like Dan Schneider at Nickelodeon. You're going to try out, um, in a voice actor's case, four shows that are going to be popular with kids so that you have a chance to be around them. It's going Hello to happen. Kitty. Right? So... 
So voice actors, like it doesn't surprise me at all that a lot of them end up being creeps. Like it, it's just like it comes to the territory. It's where it's going to be. You know, there's a bunch of YouTubers that have been exposed as creeps. You know, wherever kids are or the the victims that they want to be around is where they're going to position themselves. Okay, but when we have a situation like this, and the person who comes out and me too's them has like a checklist of a million crimes and just like, Oh, didn't pay for his parking that one time. Throw that in there too. You know, it's kind of what I see when I see, Oh, he's ableist. Sounds and he's also, like, like literally they are signaling to the woke mob. They're signaling to the, the mob that carries the proverbial torch and pick pitchforks. Right. In order specifically to, to trigger them on the things yes, that would get them wound up. Say. Right. So they're trying here specifically to sick a group on this guy. Does he deserve it? He very well may. Okay. And, and I, but a lot of it's just hearsay. The yes. Secondhand hearsay. All of it is effectively hearsay. Right. In both cases, you know, there may be witnesses. Well, there's a couple screenshots where he's abuse. actually talking, I think. What's up? He said there are screenshots. I said there's you. some actual screenshots of like him talking about the like uh, the suicide stuff, but uh, you know they're not showing the other stuff. Um, well, the, the point like is a bulk of it. The point is that I'm trying to get out here is that um, wow, there's a fucking ton of pictures of this one character he voiced. Um, but the thing, yeah, the, the thing one is, character that, oh, he does. That's an interesting shaped building there. <laughs> anyway, it's but the, the point is that. <laughs> Just generally speaking, um, I am apprehensive at canceling a person who is being canceled in this specific way with the list. Oh, by the way, also ableist. Do, Evidence is it? needed before you pull the trigger. You know, because Legitimate. because this creates. I mean, a, they did provide a doc. Of yeah, no, no, I get that. I'm just saying that the, the standard that they are holding up for a person is impossible for a single human being on the planet Earth to uh to uphold anyway so it just mm -hmm. it makes the canceling you know like if they position themselves in such a way where um they're they're just sicking the cancel culture on them right yeah and again it becomes this is about payback it is not about justice and right? i'd like to point out like because me and footnote were talking about this earlier uh, to, um, amongst ourselves like if this guy if you claim you know if, if you say if he did what he if he did what you claim, these awful, awful things, especially those those first couple ones, mm -hmm. why the fuck isn't he in jail? Like right. everybody who's out here, including yeah. his uh, former coworkers, like are saying, "Yeah, I'm glad he's gone because you know we're gonna go over soon that he was fired." Like, yes, right. he should be in jail if that's the case. If not, then it's like, well, psh, you know, I mean, you fired him, but he what's stopping him from going after? Which, Other which people. again, this also is very strange. You know, Genshin Impact decided to fire him immediately, whereas Mike Haimoto, not a peep. Yeah. Like, literally, it almost seems like, wow, this woman wrote a 50 page manifesto on why she's canceling you and hired a private. That bitch is well, crazy. Here's, here's something you gotta, here's her something needs to also here be brought up. You know up. what I mean? Here's something also needs to be brought up Genshin Impact is a very, very well-known game. They don't need this kind of publicity. So the moment this fire started to smell... No, the moment this little... thing, The moment this started to smell... Ah, fuck. The moment they started to smell smoke... Genshin Impact, they're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Them kicking him was a quick attempt to go, okay, look, we gotta put this out. This is bad PR for a game. This is bad PR for us. We don't want this. So them firing him immediately does not surprise me. <clears throat> Sorry that I stuttered there, my bad. But then it turns out that he was innocent, and uh, they fired an innocent guy. He deserved. Uh, but I'm see, not it, quite he deserved. Sure why I did this, but I included mm -hmm. this and this in the doc. All I'm gonna, uh, I will Reese. Good point. He deserves a chance to be proven legitimately guilty, and if he's not proven legitimately guilty, I think he deserves his job back. But if you know, we live in a world where people don't want to provide evidence. They just want to throw shit out there. Take my word for it, bro. It. Exactly. It's real, bro. Listen, exactly. I, I'm telling the truth, bro. Just don't believe him. Believe me, yep. bro. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I yeah, don't think we need to cover to what, the whole thing. To what uh, Green Line was, uh, Good. to what Green Line was referring to uh, about what we were talking about, I, I was saying how <laughs> the only way that I would, as a company, uh, consider firing anyone uh, via cancel culture, or or the only way that they wouldn't be able to work for me anymore is if they were behind bars, and I think that should be the standard throughout yeah, everything else. I agree. Because like. Otherwise, you're just well, a worker doing your job or whatever. I don't know. In theory, yes. But it, it, I do it, think it, that... if it affects your work ethic and the quality of what you're supposed to be producing, then yes, I might fire you. But if I think not, it could be if difficult. If you're still doing your job like you're supposed to, what I pay you for, then what's the problem? If you're not harassing like my other workers on the job, I mean, they can't distance themselves from you outside of the yeah workplace. yeah I get I guess then there's more of an them, asterisk to that, that but generally them. speaking yeah you know I uh yeah I, I think agree. there are some situations where you would still fire somebody even if they weren't found guilty just because sometimes uh fucking Alec Baldwin gets the charge dropped that was a minimum five year sentence you know what I mean like Does sometimes that, wait did he not get I'm sorry. The, the sorry. Uh, they haven't they haven't done the trial yet, mm -hmm. but the DA or the the prosecution has um, has dropped what would have been the thing that would have been the bargaining chip, and they just completely just let him get away with it. So, huh? So, anyway, so how much, how much, like bribery, how much money we... did he give the victim? That's the question. Right. The victim's the, family. The victim's family. So, so moving right past here, I'd like to, I'd love to get through this before one, an hour in. Uh, we've got one more pseudo me tooing, kind of, not really. Um, you want to take this one away too, Funim? Yeah. Okay. So it's not me too. I don't consider it me too because no one was asking for anything to be done of anything. Not that that necessarily qualifies as a me too, but so it was a public what intervention. Happened was there was, was this. It was airing dirty laundry is the easiest way to sum it up. Okay. Um, because so, so someone made a video. Tell people and, what it is. Uh, what? Tell, Sorry, what? I interrupted you to tell you what I, to I do while to you tell were doing them what it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, my connection's AIDS. Uh, so I hope it's coming through through well. But this individual who goes by Veronica um, responded after someone uh, made a uh, like they contributed to a video which aired some some dirty laundry and then she decided to um put her side out which involved mick rice pirate which has voiced in uh some anime including jojo's bizarre adventure part five as i believe it's abaccio um and basically the tldr of it is uh alcohol problem and it was on both sides you know she she fully admitted like you know she had a lot of issues that like problem she was a bit uh, quite a problem herself you know she like cheated on uh chris o'neill or whatever and then uh she later on cheated on ls mark or whatever even though ls mark is the one that she actually loved in all of this and stuff uh who she's currently married to now or whatever but anyway so um and then she don't know brought up a lot of details are. about mick and how he was uh well I mean, Mick is like an animator on YouTube and all that, but uh, and Chris O'Neill's Oni uh, NG, right? Oh, uh, you should know who that is. But I do know. But anyway, uh, Chris got a huge, uh, not a redemption arc because he was just like an angel throughout this whole thing. Everyone's just like, "I'm sorry, we did Chris <laughs> I, dirty." I love this. Which top I think is comment. the best outcome of this whole situation. Do you see this top comment? Holy fuck! Chris is such a massive champ. Despite everything that happened to him, he never made a video whining about his life. He just keeps his chin up and go keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um oh my god, all of the top comments are about Chris. All of them anyway, about anyway, Chris. anyway, anyway, let's let's uh, all right, back back on track. because uh, mm -hmm. I think I was losing track of where I was even trying to say it. But but yeah, so uh, You lost me already, dude. That that aired all of that, all of that, and then Mick said, Okay, this was a private matter that I thought should have stayed private and his i don't know if it's his current girlfriend who's called Smokey, who's the one who contributed to not not that video but the original video that prompted this veronica person to make her video so mick 
then proceeds to make his own response video to clear up, to tie up some loose ends. And the way it started, I thought it was just going to be one of those, like, you see, everything's wrong. But uh, no, it actually wasn't. Um, he admitted to a lot of uh, things on his ends that he was like, you know, he's like, yeah, I, I was, uh, you know, not behaving appropriately. And, you know, he was uh, he was definitely like acknowledging that he was drinking too much. And he uh, basically uh, the conclusion is that he is now going to try and go sober, which I think is a great outcome of this, because clearly that was an issue. Um, and he also made some apologies. Uh, you know, he had an opportunity to acknowledge some of these huge missteps. And uh, as much as, you know, this brought to light a lot of things that otherwise people wouldn't have liked, uh, it honestly had a relatively good resolve, in my opinion. So as much as it would have been nice if, you know, this, <laughs> this wasn't aired publicly, uh, I'm just glad for that. So... There you go. Uh, take it what you will. I don't consider it cancellation. I just hope, uh, you know, wish Mick the best and all that, uh, even though I I do think he had some misbehavings uh, going on. Nothing that's like, you know, a crazy, like, criminal. You know, it's just, like, interpersonal drama stuff. Okay, FTDM, can anyway, you do uh, me a favor? Yeah. All right. Can you summarize this in like one sentence, like a like a YouTube headline, you know, title, YouTube title, <laughs> assuming I know um, nothing about any of the people that you're talking about. He wants a timestamp title. He wants um, a, he wants a clips channel title. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I you could call it the uh, private um, matters made public. Mick Lauer. The Mick Rice pirate story. <laughs> <laughs> Host a flaming Mick, podcast Mick Rice struggles Pirate. to come up with title. <laughs> right, you, you can call it uh, Mick Lauer um, pers private matters. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Great. Right. That, sound, that sounds like a fucking segment on CSI. Or Dirty Laundry. <laughs> air, airing Mick Lauer's Dirty Laundry. I don't know. That the actually Mick sounds kind of salacious. Mick Lauer pledges to go sober. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of just really yes, trying to sure. understand who any of these people are because you just talked for like fifteen minutes and I have zero you idea. Were, you were you were right. Voice there actor Mick Lauer's response. They're YouTubers <laughs> who became. But Mick Lauer's a voice, voice actor, actors. and he was the one who had his. Keep going. Oh my god! Oh my! God. We are we are You're rambling. So F same yeah, thing. FDM's dealing with some delay issues. I am right now. delayed. Yes, I got delayed. Yes, you are. Um, oh my god, <laughs> Jesus! I love this. It's not me this time. Wait Fine, you, you you were filling in your own gaps over there. Go ahead. No, I think we're done. <laughs> we I'm move glad on. that I'm, I'm done. I'm done to too. Do my pickups. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, save us. I'm just trying to open this so it's ready. All right. Cool. Anyway, uh, nobody else really cared about this, so let's uh, close it and uh, move right along. I lost my page. Where the? Oh no, it's this one. Okay. All right. It's bad look for me with the sliding. Close. You look closing. like uh, you look like Modoc. Yeah. <laughs> Dear God. No. Well, I know what's going on the thumbnail. <laughs> All right. If we ever bring back some nails. <laughs> some terribly sad news. The world's first AMV creator has passed away. You can see him here floating through the cosmos. I, I like how you were true neck beard fashion. The you, OG. you had your hand up. I was saluting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I love it when you guys change the camera off and then don't put it back. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my highlights are missing. Years. So that's fantastic. Uh, Rest in peace. I have to ask, 
because I'm not sure. He, was he actually the first, or is this just someone saying that? He's the first, first recorded. He created yeah, first his first AMV first. by hooking up two VCRs together to sync scenes from the for, uh, from the sci-fi anime Space Battleship Yamato with the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love. It is a great tragedy, uh, even greater than the tragedy of the creator of Space Battleship Yamato and Galaxy Express 39. Dear Lord, my comedy timing is terrible. Uh and Galaxy Express 39 creator Leiji Masamoto actually died as well. <laughs> he somehow outlived his, his biggest fan. You get an uh, F so this, on that transition. What's up? I, I get said an you F get an F. F. Yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I will do better. <laughs> My apology video is incoming. <laughs> I can't timestamp this shit. He's going to me to you for the anxiety and duress your transition has caused him. <laughs> It'll be called the random eleven files. Uh, like Me two wanting you. It is a shame that this it is a, creator it, it, of Yamato Space Battleship Yamato died. Uh yes, Leiji Matsumoto is uh I mean for a lot of us I think we were more surprised he was still alive. <laughs> but uh he is right. the creator of some of the greatest uh, anime that have ever been made um, in terms of like, they have like a grandness to them, you know, like this um, otherworldly, you know, level of complexity and world building that yeah. a lot of anime we watch doesn't have. Um, and they're a bunch of space operas. So if you like those, there you go. It says here he was inspired to draw manga thanks to Osamu Tezuka's works. So, sadly, after fake Osamu Tezuka died last podcast, he just couldn't live anymore. And uh, he he saw the headline and forgot that the real one forgot died that like he had died in eighty nine. <laughs> it, it brought back such sorrowful memories. He took to the drink and died. <laughs> Ooh, once again, living up to our name is the most empathetic host on a podcast. <laughs> All right, so f fans who have uh, who have shown empathy how it should be uh, have been leaving flowers at statues of Mattel in Harlock following the death of Leiji Matsumoto. So all throughout Japan, there's these uh, these statues that are of his works, and people are leaving po bouquets with them and stuff. So that's nice. That, that, that is, is nice. nice. Everyone liked that. Moving on. Okay, are we at an hour? Fuck, we are at an hour already. Damn it. So my wife came in here and finished off my whiskey while you guys were talking. <laughs> and now I need to pour a second glass that's coming in way too early. For how Dude, long. <laughs> Vegas has just made you so much better. So now you're the alcohol collector, the gambling collector. Like, Dude, fucking, fucking Nick Ricade is in Vegas that. this weekend. Like, <laughs> I was Are off we... by one week. I could have <laughs> gone to uh, fucking... Um, what do you call it? Road Road Rash or what does he call his thing? I yeah, don't know. The thing he does with Dick I, Masterson. Are they doing that in Vegas? Well, they're doing a meetup in Vegas. I, I know. Yeah, they're doing their own thing, I think. With, but I think Dick is going. But anyway, yeah. Um, uh, are we gonna have to have a, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. anime collector's dirty laundry YouTube video? Uh, uh, I mean, it, 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 if you guys want to make it, like, <laughs> Putnam tried that already, and YouTube gave him a community guideline strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad a, stuff, I'd say. <laughs> who do you have as YouTube just, watching your back? Apparently the algorithm, because it was an unlisted video that was about 10 seconds long. It was long. a private <laughs> video. Even more. It's even more private than unlisted. Susan Susan stepped down. She's not got your back anymore. You're fair game. <laughs> so, oh, uh, you're right. I can re-upload it. Better do that right now. <laughs> before the show started. Uh, Goodbye channel. <laughs> my, wife, my wife was stressed out. And I was talking to the guys and I, I turned my head and I'm like, my wife's name is Julie, but we don't call her. No. <laughs> I tell, do you need some caffeine, Jew? <laughs> Would you like some chlorine gas, Jew? <laughs> like, oh, no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so next, anyway, well now I'm worried about this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, next that, article. That, that I was like, like wow, you guys. Was, like, that's not, <laughs> anyway, so um, so Japan has discovered seven thousand new islands. The country's number of islands has doubled, with over fourteen thousand now included on its map. Uh, it's actually more than doubled because it went from six thousand eight hundred fifty-two to fourteen one twenty-five. The last mapping of the Yo, country we was should, conducted. Like, pop a, a house on there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> pop a house on there. <laughs> Just uh, the last mapping of the country was conducted by the Japan Coast Guard uh, back in 1987. At the time, they decided to leave out any islands that didn't have a circumference of over 100 meters. The revised map uses the UN Convention on the Law of the Seas definition of what constitutes an island a naturally formed area of land surrounded by water, which is above water at high tide. The news about the islands comes as the tensions between Ch Japan and China continue to rise over the sovereignty of a group of uninhabited islands in the East China Sea, the Senkaku Islands. Now, so they just discovered 7,000 more islands to fight about, and a Chinese woman has purchased uninhabited Japanese islands. So wait so a minute, wealthy did you China say some no, it, islands? I don't understand this because they say it's a wealthy China woman, but then they go on to say, yeah, her family bought them. <laughs> like, <laughs> why is she important? So a wealthy Chinese woman uh, has somehow managed to accrue the funds necessary to purchase a deserted island in Japan's Okinawa prefecture, bound to have many confused as to <laughs> as to how such an action is allowed, whilst making some concerned that this will lead to a potential conflict in the future. There was, alleged, uh, there was allegedly unrest on social media after this news broke, as some believed this acquisition was, quote, an expansion of Chinese territory, though others were jealous of such a luxurious purchase. The woman, who was in her 30s, explained to China media that one of her relatives, who operates a company, bought Yanaha Island, which is north of the main Okinawa Island. A Tokyo-based consulting firm with expertise in Chinese business owned uh, portion uh, in Chinese business owned portions of the island since February 2021, and the office of Izena Village in Okinawa, which oversees the island, claims the company owns 50% of the land. Not sure why that's important. A video from social media revealed a file addressed to the firm asserting to have purchased the island, though public records and sources familiar with the matter, quote unquote, indicate the possession of Yanaha Island has changed on several occasions. People on social media praised the woman's acquisitions as land cannot be owned in China. So you can't own land in China because it's communist, right? Mm. The definition of capitalism is basically private property, right? Yeah. Having things that belong to you. Yeah. Um, it's not your land, it's our land. It's our land, right? That's how China works. So her buying parts of Japan puts up a very interesting dilemma of do the Chinese governments believe Hello? that they now own this part of Japan? Because they they're probably citizens. do in their own mind. So and, and will that create conflict? Because as we've been watching, the Senkaku Islands have been very um it's it's been a hot button issue for a while. So, so anyway. They say people on social media praised the woman's acquisition as land cannot be owned in China, and others even demanded that she purchase the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. <laughs> <laughs> so, in addition to that, this is just some. This is sort of the theme of uh, Japan's current uh, trend with its neighbors. Um, I saw this article and I just thought it was kind of interesting. Um, so. At Sword News 24, they investigated this block of abandoned Russian territory in Nagasaki. This side, obviously, is Russia, and this side is Japan. <laughs> and in Soviet Nagasaki, the block investigates us. <laughs> <laughs> My highlights are gone. Oh, fucking wonderful. <laughs> this is just... Oh, there we go. So uh, they, found a, they found a sign that wasn't overgrown that said, Notice, this land was registered as property of the Soviet Union under Japanese law on the 19th of October, 1987. On the 27th of December, 1991, the Japanese government recognized the Russian Federation and the Soviet Union as the same nation by way of continuity. And so this property 
then became, and so this became the property of the Russian Federation. Entry and use are prohibited. Russian ambassador to Japan, Alexander Nikolaevich uh, Panov, <laughs> 23 of August 1984. I just realized a, a further part in this article that's a joke is referencing that specific guy. Anyway, so standing at the border uh, between Russia and Japan is, you know, ideal. This thing, they're standing at the border. Anyway, um, it was originally the site of an Imperial Russian consulate built in 1875. However, the Russian Empire fell in the Revolution of 1917, and the consulate was abandoned. After World War II, Nagasaki residents who lost their homes from the war and atomic bomb from the war and the atomic bomb. Oh, because they they did drop the bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they built huts there to live in, um, and it and it had been used as a sort of shanty town for a while. Then, in 1987, the USSR suddenly had a renewed interest in the area and filed the claim of ownership with the Nagasaki District Legal Affairs Bureau, who approved it. However, the USSR collapsed in 1991, so it's unclear what they were planning to do with it. After that, in 2000, Russia filed a lawsuit in, Nagas in the Nagasaki District Court demanding the eviction of everyone living on the land on the basis that the ownership had carried over from the USSR to them. That's That must be what... I don't know, this is after they already, they already established that. Anyway... Uh, so anyway, then she, she came across the cat and she goes, comrade Panoff, is that you <laughs> referring to the, to the consulate guy? Anyway, although it's interesting that there's an unoccupied mystery spot of Russia in the middle of Nagasaki, it's also a huge problem waiting to happen. As we've seen, the buildings there are quite dilapidated and on the verge of collapse. It's also located on a steep slope which means if the structure should suddenly give way, they will likely spill onto Japanese territory, causing possible danger or injury. If that were to happen, there will be an international issue of liability to deal with, made more sensitive by increasingly strained relations between the two countries. Hopefully, the matter can be settled before such a thing happens. What is this article? Ah, you know that you that yourself. territory oh. is uh that territory is a lot like myself. Entry and use are prohibited. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, also, Sailor Moon oh. ice skating show was canceled due to quote unstable world situation because a Russian figure skater was set to perform as Sailor Moon. So things are getting pretty bad in uh, in Japan in terms of like you you might not think about it that often, but they are literally neighbors to Russia, you know? And China. And China. Now, I'm going to take a brief break and catch up on the comments before we continue here. Uh, Rosalina says Good he's luck. tired no. and sore from Pentacon. <laughs> okay, apparently I said this. <laughs> Sean Schemmel was there, but I didn't say anything. Well, if it was Peter Kalamis, maybe you would have. Uh, although on day two, a beluga whale carried out on a guy talking about Christianity near the Pentagon entrance. So I got a good laugh because she kept coming back instead of walking away. Wow. <laughs> there was a fuck ton of articles for me this time. Yes. Notice how many of them I actually included. <laughs> 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 so Japanese <laughs> candy company makes a tearful, heartfelt apology for raising their prices by seven cents us now you might think to yourself that's it who fucking cares but actually the original price says here like fellow japanese snacks umaibo and black thunder black thunder cheer and appear to have been uh, feeling the pinch of worldwide price increases and announced that they will be increasing the price of their popular Poochie Poochie Uranai candy. Quote, since we started making them 38 years ago, we've worked hard to keep Poochie Poochie Uranai at 20 yen. But due to rising costs, we're raising the price to 30 yen. So they are raising the cost by 50%. So, yeah, it's not that much money, but 
if you have to raise the price by 50%, what does that say about the global inflation we're dealing with? I mean, imagine houses are already out of reach for most people. Imagine trying to buy one if it's 50% more. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's the whole market issue of now it's no longer there's any, you know, values to keep, you know, things priced well. We want to make it to where, okay, if someone owns all this stuff, they can sell for whatever they want to, which at times, you know, there there are things, you know, what you've created and stuff, you sell for what you want. But when it comes to housing and uh, certain products like food, there does need to be some kind of control to keep people from going. Yes, you want this? Uh, no, it's not a control. It's Five not control a control on the cost. The value increases because the property around it has continued to improve, right? More amenities, more infrastructure and whatnot. Yeah. The problem the is the that wages have not increased the at the same rate. And we had the baby boom. So we have uh, a huge surplus of people, lots of uh, immigration coming to the United States, if we're going to use the United States as the example here. And so there's a ton more people who need a house, right? And people have grown up to a standard because they grew up largely a lot of us in the 90s where the economy was fucking great. And so you had uh, a quality of life that now you do not have, but you feel you're owed because you used to have it, right? And so what ends up occurring is that you have these massive, you know, like people literally buy plots of land and build all the houses with the intent of renting or selling them. And they just keep building more and more houses, despite the fact that we have a huge homeless problem because people can't afford these houses, you know? Um, Or... Let's be real. There's way more reasons than just not being able to afford the house that causes homelessness. But Mm -hmm. I just I just want to point out, you know, like the. Every war in the history of mankind has been fought over resources. Right. And currently we are in a perfect storm for civil unrest, civil war in the United States and World War Three. So this is going to be a lit year. I can't wait to see how it unfolds. <laughs> Meanwhile, J- Japan is planning a new government unit to handle disinformation. <sighs> like we said, this is going to be a lit year. <laughs> a lit year. Yeah. So um, I'm going to teach you the secret of how government operates. They will literally create a disinformation campaign and then use said disinformation campaign as the catalyst for why they need to curb out disinformation. End of story. Also, controversial LGBT bill in discussion in Japan ahead of Hiroshima G7 summit. So the G7 uh, countries are meeting in uh, Hiroshima uh, and Japan is set to look again on elective bureaucrats, uh, people from outside nations coming together and shaming you into not doing enough to be part of their little club, right? So, Japan's like, well, we need to really bend over backwards to suck the LGBT community off because, uh, we on the world stage, according to the standards set by the West, look like we're behind. Oh, and also, we're gonna have to realize uh, a more diverse society. So again, Japan has a has a failing uh, birth rate, a declining population, um, and the problem has gotten so bad that a Yale economics professor says that the only solution to dealing with the burden of Japan's rapidly aging society is the mass suicide of the elderly, including seppuku, or ritual disembowelment. 2023 is going to be a lit year, everyone. <laughs> anyway, um, in in some good news coming out of Japan, my mouse died. Hold on. Or just disconnected. It didn't actually die. In some good news for once, renowned Japanese artists are taking a stand against deranged Western Twitter users. Apologies for how front heavy this podcast is going to be with all the open discussions. So a Japanese artist who has been subjected to the horrors and of to the horrors, political correctness, and hypocrisy of Western 
pro shipper slash anti contingent uh, has written a lengthy article detailing his experiences in hopes that other Japanese artists don't suffer the same fate. So um, pro shipper, believe it or not, does not stand for like pro as in a good thing. Like, oh, good shippers, right? No, it means problematic shippers. <laughs> so so uh, basically they put together a... Um, a document detailing their experience dealing with a bunch of busybodies who care way too much. Oh, these characters are underage. Oh, they're kissing and they're still in middle school. Uh, and probably worse things, but again, they don't exist. So they put together this whole big document um, and uh, it seems to be gaining some traction, including among some big names in, uh, in Japanese media. So, that's good to see that the Japanese people, despite the fact that their government is uh, just as devoted to selling them out as, as every other countries are, um, ha the people themselves have been remaining pretty based. Anyway, moving on so we can make up for lost time. Uh, in a quick follow-up from last podcast and the podcast before, um, more uh, COVID-19 delays because China is uh, getting raped by the virus again, and uh, they have been a huge part of the production pipeline. So Megaton Musashi is getting postponed after uh, or at episode 27. Technoroid Overmind as well at episode 8. Uh, Spy Classroom delays the 8th episode. That was last week, so it just doesn't matter because the next 8th episode comes out on Wednesday anyway, so okay. you know, whatever. Uh, and Near Automata is returning this weekend following the COVID-related postponement. So at least at least they're recovering somewhat. Anyway, who would like to do pickups? Who has okay, to? I'll go ahead. <laughs> so I got this one. I love how this came from eBay. That time I slime. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Was that another Reese IOU note? What did I just look at? <laughs> what? Anyway, so can anybody guess what it possibly is going to be? Oh, I, 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 you know, I haven't the foggiest, but I'll just grab one. You're right. And see that, that time, time I got reincarnated as a slime season one part one because I <clears throat> failed to purchase it when I bought the uh, season one part two art box. Anyway, so that's check that off the list. Then number two. Uh, so you guys remember I picked up those um, that anime that was made by the Japanese government's uh, branch on uh, education about the North Korean hostage situations. Well, it turns out that there's also a documentary from the BBC about this girl who was abducted by uh, the North Koreans. Um, so I picked that up. Uh, I don't know. I I like documentaries. I'll watch it at some point. Tell us how you like your BBC video later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my. Kill my ears. <laughs> and then from right stuff, uh, a big order that I've been waiting on for a while has decided to show up. So uh, Digimon. Hell yeah. Uh, loop on the third part five. Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Out of curiosity, Brad, where do you put these? Like <laughs> Up his ass. Like, you don't have any shelves, so it's like... <laughs> it's, it's a right box. Here. <laughs> oh. I lovely. put them in these. These will be going to the storage unit at some point. Uh, Until you can get shelves. And I try to only buy less the shelves essentials. and more shelf space, like space to did you, put the shelves. Did you not get a liner notes booklet for Zetsubo Sensei? Apparently not. Oh no, it, it came separate. Oh. What the fuck? Okay. Fuck, that's heavy. Yeah. Was it full color? Yes, it oh, is. Just... <laughs> nice. All right, and then color uh, ink weighs more than black and white. The most uh, effective use of my money ever. Oh, okay. Uh, Henke Shoujo, which uh, which came with this thing like taped to it. <laughs> yep, that's a, that's just a bunch of cards. 
postcards are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, they they, uh, they fit right inside the case too. So slime diaries? No, season part, two. Season That's two, part season one. Two. Slime diaries, I assume. Yeah. The slime diaries. All right, yeah. so I'm caught up. Yay. Uh, you still need to get. Uh, oh, you got the the art box for season two, part two. I did. It's yeah. Not in here. <laughs> I did buy it, right? Um, oh, yeah. My Hero Academia Season 5 Part 1. I haven't watched it yet. Season 5 Art Box with Part 2. Uh, that is Part 2, right? Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Why does it just say Season 5? Okay, that's the that's the filler box. It just says Season 5. Um, the Dungeon of Black Company, apparently, I got. Okay, cool. Thought I pulled that out of the cart. Whatever. <laughs> um, loop on the third. Secret of Twilight Gemini. That's what that says, right? Secret mm -hmm. of, yeah. Uh, the Conan Lupin movie. movie? Blu-ray. Cool. The Vampire Dies in No Time. Uh, Konosuba Steelbook. Nice. Uh, one or two. You got one or two? Um, one. Looks like one, right? One. Hell yeah. Uh, it's okay, though. Kono Suba Steel Book 2. Two. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I like how these these uh, pickups are just starting to block the cam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, return of uh, PyCal. <laughs> yeah. It's strategically return. censored. Uh, Loop on the third part three. Mm -hmm. I finally caught up on Loop on. I'm so happy. I was really getting stressed out about it. World Heroes trash. And he still I'm picked it up. Still has a slip cover. <laughs> um, part one, one. Blu-ray. And then the last three things. I finally picked up Charge Man Ken. <laughs> sure, it'll get a Blu-ray as soon as I as soon as I mentioned it that I got it. Uh, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Mugen Train arc, which Demon is uh, like what six episodes? Seven DVD episodes? height ish. Yeah. Charge Mannequin is a DVD, and Just then like the movie. Demon Slayer Entertainment District arc, woohoo! Which is also DVD height. Yeah. Great job. Much love. Anaplex, thank you for raping me mercilessly and not apologizing for taking my money as well. <laughs> anyway, those are my pickups. If you guys would like to uh, pick up where I left off with your pickups. Who's next? So, uh, Greenland, do you have anything? I have, I do, but they're in the Discord. So, All right. Well, I'm going there next, so. Aren't you lucky? You will not see his mug this day, chat. Oh, we lost FTZ. When did that happen? Oh. The uh, the lag age finally caught him. <laughs> All right, I got him. I got him up. Okay, you can do it if you want. Okay, whatever. I can't. I can't control your screen. Okay. Oh, hey, look what I found. <laughs> hey, look Slime part two. Camera back to me, please. My my ow, my earbuds are. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the uh, season two, uh, volume two, art box. All right. Anyway, I'm good. Boy, my hair does not want to stay up today. Go ahead, Discord. Uh, looking at uh, what's new. Oh, is that mine? <laughs> yes, this is yours. Stop. I thought you were. I thought you were no. screen sharing. All right. Go Should pick it up, you? Reese. <laughs> So I got I uh picked up um Ghost of the Shell the 4K steelbook or 4K Blu-ray combo steelbook from Best Buy. Uh, I was just I was there last night. Or, yeah, last night. Uh, and I just saw it, saw one there. I was like, oh, what the hell? Why not? So I think I bought this too. I, I was hesitant because it says 25th anniversary, real fucking big on it. Yeah, that's, that's annoying. And then Seb. Sailor Moon complete. So first shout season. out to Nexi and to Reese for this. Whatever contribute. Oh, I think we were just like talking about. You know, is this the checking the discs? Got, like you need discs or something? I don't know. Greenline picked up some case closed uh, 
things. Yeah, statues. That they were they were on pre-order for like the longest fucking time. And I honestly thought they'd be a lot smaller than what they actually are. Like I thought they'd be Nami's size, honestly, because that's Nami right next to in the corner of the picture, but like they're not. They're like almost like one six scales, and I'm just like, oh, that's why they were so fucking <laughs> expensive to ship. Okay. <laughs> so nice surprise. Yeah, nice surprise. Very nice surprise. So it actually made me want to rewatch the show. So <laughs> I had that on the weekend. All 1,000 episodes. Right. And now only the ones that I have, it's up to like 130. <laughs> so. Oh, Footnote's back. That is true. Did you enjoy your time? Oh, me? <laughs> what did they do to uh, you? Show us on the doll. I'm with. <laughs> you got I any pickups? Oh, I put it on the desk. No, I don't have pickups. Okay. Hold on, I'm trying to. My pickup line didn't work. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, is this it? That's not it. Okay, whatever. Moving. Oh wait, no, here it is. Oh, I lied. Okay. Anyway, uh, that'll have to wait for a future podcast because I clearly wasn't prepared for that joke. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. So, uh, was, was, Japan, that it? was that end? Was that the end? That was it. Okay. Japan's Toei un- unveils a 10 year growth plan after the death of their CEO, Osamu Tezuka, the man who died twice. Uh, So a major Japanese film group, Toei Company, has reorganized its senior management following the death of Tezuka Osamu, its CEO and president. And it unveiled a new 10-year plan that calls for investment and international expansion. Uh, Bum, bum, bum. (laughs) Things are uh, not going not going Point three is gonna be lit. <laughs> yeah, Tezuka, who is not a relation of to who is not a relation of the late anime director of the same name, was sixty two. Holy shit! Who is making that noise? What noise? That ringing. I don't it's hear ringing. ringing. Guys. That's definitely coming through the headphones. All right. Whoever just got muted, that was you who did it. That was Reese then. Reese. <laughs> I don't know what the, that thought was. Probably, I, don't know. I, I, Reese I heard. Reese is always the criminal. I heard Reese sounded like he was sitting next to his uh, air conditioning again, but <laughs> not when you said it, which is weird. So I'm, I'm going to skip through a bunch of this. Place I um, was last night. Choi issued new documentation setting out its 10 year strategic plan to 2033. And it noted that its current financial year, which runs to the end of March 2023, has already broken the company record for its highest grossing box office year. Get this. That is thanks to the success of titles including The First Slam Dunk, The Legend of Butterfly, and One Piece Film Red. You think any one of those did a little bit more of the lifting than the rest? (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever heard of Legend of Butterfly? (laughs) No. Heard of it. Yes. The strategy document uh, says that the company recognizes that the world has become a globalized content market. It acknowledges the power, the power poof, the streamers. What? Power poof. It's like a Powerpuff Girls knockoff. All right. Uh, the streamers and says. Uh, oh no, the power like of acknowledges the power oh. of the streamers and says that audiences are becoming more diverse. Toei's response is to focus on original content that has global appeal, a longer life cycle, and which can be used in multiple formats and derivatives. Sweet, can't wait to see the episodes come out on TikTok. <laughs> Over the coming 10 years, Toei aims to grow international revenue as a share of its total from present day 30% to 50%. So currently, only 30% of the revenue they get from outside of Japan is, well, I guess I already said it. So the percentage of revenue they get from outside of Japan is 30%. They want to bring it up to half. Um 
so that means that things are going to start catering less and less to the Japanese audience, less and less to diehard anime fans, and more and more to people who go to Taylor Swift concerts and uh, and buy Yeezys. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so outside the realm of, of what a normie is that I can't even come up with, with a slam for them. <laughs> To achieve this, the document charts an investment phase from the present to 2028 and a payback phase running 2029 to 2033 with implementation overlapping the two. Specific steps include the expansion of production into offshore centers, including the U.S. and the Philippines, and the Japanese release of more international content. So this is the part I'm interested in. Uh, recent examples include its Voltus 5 Legacy with the Philippines GMA, The Journey, which is that, that Saudi Arabian anime, uh, and Spicy Candy, produced through a Shanghai subsidiary with a Chinese partner. So basically, Toei is going to start letting um, outside countries take some of their IP, in the case of Voltus 5 Legacy, which is the live action series from the Philippines, I think this part is cool. Like, all of this sounds awesome to me, um, except for when the Proud family gets an anime. That's going to suck. <laughs> In-house, it aims to produce two live-action films per year, one in Tokyo and one in Kyoto, and one major animation film, each capable of grossing 3 billion yen. It will invest in technology such as virtual production, AI, and digital humans, and, with actual humans, develop somewhat un-Japanese compensation structures based on results rather than seniority. Well, that's kind of nice. Further spending will be directed to the studio facilities in both cities, as well as on investment properties that provide a more stable income source than content production and distribution. So uh, it's going to be, uh, 2023 is going to be lit. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, Toei Company did release Jungle Kurobe at one point because CMS refused to re-release that anime. Okay. Um, so Luigi Metal 64 says, I never bought any Viz Media DVD because they made dialogue changes in Save the Moon before Burn the Witch. Okay. I don't know how those are connected. But... Uh, they were apparently both released by Viz Media, so apparently Viz yeah, Media... Yeah, so Luigi the Meadow 64 does not buy things by Viz Media or never bought anything from Sony stuff, as he calls it. I don't... Mm -hmm. like, Do you tell us more. If, tell us more how you won't pay money for anime. <laughs> uh, happy to see Discotech fully licensed through Yatsura and Rikiri Honey. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's keep going here. Oh, let's not showcase that just yet. No, no. <laughs> that is. You don't want to blow your chip. I don't want to blow my chip too. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mirage Leonardo, this one's for you, buddy. Uh, God Shard Chronicles, a retro meets modern action RPG. It is coming soon. Um, I didn't link it here, but you linked the trailer. And I would just like to say. The gameplay sells me on the game, but the cutscenes with the girls in their leotards pretending to wear armor just on their shoulder uh, talks past the sale <laughs> and and makes me decide not to buy it. <laughs> it uh, seems very strange. Anyway, um, I should have linked the uh, the video, but we'll we'll talk about it in a future podcast. Anyway, in live action news, the Tetris movie has released the trailer and uh, it looks fucking awesome. Uh, legitimately, truly, honestly, hype. Hype for this. I can't wait to watch it. I don't have Apple TV, but I where there's a will, there's a torrent. <laughs> I will find a way. <laughs> And if it ever gets released on physical, of course I'll buy it. <laughs> so yeah, it's got a really cool effect to it where um, I don't know if it's going to be in the movie like this too, or just if it was like a thing for the trailer, but it constantly goes into like pixel art. Like it'll transition from live action to pixel art. 
uh, which was really cool. A lot of really just aesthetically very cool. Um, the story seems uh, absurd. Like they had chat GPT take a very simple story and make it filled with drama. And uh, I'm excited for it because it looks, it looks hilarious. And by hilarious, I mean like it's just it's so over the top that I can't believe what I'm seeing. So anyway, that's cool. <laughs> also, I just want to throw this out here. What, why, what, what are we doing? Whose hands do I need to break? <laughs> well, it wasn't me. That's for sure. but I'm, I'm touching myself, okay? <laughs> yeah, are you still touching yourself now that Nebula's on screen? <laughs> no, no, no oh, definitely not. Yeah, so uh, I don't really, like, you know, I skip a lot of these things, but this one was just so egregious, I kind of felt the need to bring it up. Um they seem to have gone out of their way to uh, androgenize. No, not even androgen. There's they've removed like I any form of the female body other than than. Uh, I Android. legitimately feel like they saw the pose she was actually making and thought, "Oh, that's too sexy." Mark, can you go up there and just like strike a similar pose and we'll just cut you in and then boom photoshop mark's body on her rest of her like unless the actress legitimately had a mastectomy which i know these are fake like i we looked up a picture of her and she clearly is not super well endowed like this but even still i mean david copperfield Tatas beyond her, you know. Like anyway, uh, and then also uh, they've there's like no curve <laughs> happening here, only curve you kind of get. I just and then the boobs were like reduced. It looks like they've touched it up to completely remove uh, sex appeal. Mm -hmm. It's a gender neutral zone, okay. <laughs> there's nothing neutral about this. <laughs> anyway, so um. Uh, Luigi the Metal 64 says males can be sexy too. I think wow. you missed the point. Oh. Do you think that's hot, Luigi? Yeah. Is this a sexy pose? Does this do it for you? God damn it. <laughs> you fucker. Does this do it for you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got a, I've got an even sexier article. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is going to create new Lord of the Rings films that will honor the past, look to the future, and adhere to, to the strongest level of quality. Do you think it's going to have the level of quality that only a billion dollar Amazon property can bring you? <laughs> right. <clears throat> also, that's kind of strange because like, there's no more like books. <laughs> yeah, there actually are. Um there's more there's more Tolkien Middle Earth lore to be told. Right. But, but, the uh, but not it, Lord saying, of the hey, Rings. It's just that Lord of the Rings Earth, is the like thing the, that the everybody Silmarillion knows. Or whatever. They said more yeah, the Lord of the Rings. The appendices and stuff. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Um, so they said they're going to be making... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Davis Aslov announced during the company's quarter four uh, earnings call that the company will be making multiple new Lord of the Rings films. Peter Jackson took an unprecedented leap of faith to realize the incredible story, characters, and world of the Lord of the Rings on the big screen. But for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored. They keep... Uh, they are, however, keeping Peter Jackson and his original Lord of the Rings collaborators, Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens, in the loop. So maybe they'll be working on it. And then um, there are plenty of other areas of Tolkien works that Warner Brothers Discovery could adapt, including numerous stories published in the posthumous work, The Silmarillion, as well as stories included in the history of Middle-earth that was published by Tolkien's son, Christopher, uh, in the years following his father's death. And there's also Tolkien's unfinished tales. Uh, and there's also the possibility that Peter Jackson's original Lord of the Rings trilogy gets remade. Now, spoiler alert, that's what they've chosen to do. I have the movie poster right here. 
Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes. I hope I don't get flagged for that rainbow dog. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Lord of the Rings 2, the same movie except gayer and feminist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you had to have the scene with Frodo, Mary, and Pippin in bed from Return of the King. Yeah, <laughs> of course I did. Well, I had to cover up the ring wraiths in the water. <laughs> I also have so okay. This this cracked me up to no end. Uh, apparently, because I had to search like girls' hand holding uh, strap on <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> I uh, I chose to go to an incognito tab in Brave. And apparently when you do that, Brave no longer searches Google as the primary uh, search yeah. engine. It uses Brave search engine. And I got the biggest laugh because I searched Tranny Gollum. And <laughs> it returned with, did you mean <laughs> she-male Schmeagel? <laughs> Whoa. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Whoa. Dead dang so, again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I will tell, I will tell you this. Um you see I don't shit. recommend using Brave's image search because everything that I searched that was somewhat sexual in nature. I'm dead serious. You scroll down half a page of images and there's somebody taking a huge shit. Like there was <laughs> like, for all the evils Google has done. At least they have filtered out the scat porn. <laughs> well, you know what, Brad? I, I, I was right. I said Brad, there's a shit. reason it's called brave search. Okay. <laughs> Only the brave use it. <laughs> casting, <laughs> casting Bezos as Melkor. <laughs> oh. uh, Luigi Mel 64 says, I do support female characters that have the proper rounded hips and breasts as they are. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you, I'm glad that had to be said. You know, Rosalino I, I, says, I well, look, we all we all support the breasts as they are. All of us do. Okay, <laughs> we're in solidarity with you, my friends. We are, we are in solidarity with the tits. Raise your fists for to the make tits. cute looking characters. Design an arcing head with with tall and round eyes together. Then pick if the character should be a male <laughs> or a female by designing the male body or the female body. Is wow, that what they did cute. with Nebula? <laughs> Cute is like the number one topic that Luigi covers. <laughs> Soon there will be a food of Fenor. Uh, that pink-haired man looks nothing like an like an anime man. The, you've missed the point. He's not an anime man. He's trans. Do you not no see his trans flag brooch? <laughs> no one's claiming that he's anime. This is Lord he is a Ranch. trans disabled elf. <laughs> In <laughs> representation matters. <laughs> anyway, so I can't wait to see this uh, train wreck of a movie that will shit on everything. Like also, Brave. as soon as I saw that photo of uh, Arwen and Aragorn, and Aragorn looks like he's being given some horrible news, and she looks like she wants in bed, I just knew what had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, that's the one I hand painted highlights on because it was a very low resolution image from uh, Broad City, the the Comedy Central show. Oh, anyway, Karen Golem. Karen Golem, yeah. It's an improvement. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the fact that I went to I went to bed at four thirty to produce this this masterpiece here. Did you dream about? Oh, it? and I included. I included uh, the Chojin real small in the image the way that Disney does for China. Uh, that was intentional. <laughs> Long live the Chojins. All right. Also, there's one more thing. Um, they have some news here about the War of the Rohirrim. Turns out that the film is going to go in theaters April 12, 2024. So the thing that uh, Toonami, Jason DeMarco guy is making 
is going to be a theatrical movie, which means the CG might not suck half as bad. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, that's cool. Love that. (laughs) All right. Netflix's Pluto anime adaptation looks incredibly intense. So I kind of wish that Sankaku Complex had written an article, so I'd have something to show you. But um, yeah, it's from uh, Naoki Urasawa. And Osama Tezuka, or based, it's actually, it's based on a chapter of Astro Boy. And uh, it looks both really awesome. And then a couple shots, you're like, whoa, that didn't live up to the rest of it. <laughs> but uh, it yeah, really a couple captured... shots are kind of jank, but there's so much production behind it that I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, they're almost, they're almost, uh, they're almost waving jangling keys in your face. So you don't notice how bad some parts are, such as this part. <laughs> Oh, I think I this notice. concept is cringe. <laughs> the, the concept of my hand, its forms, my and now it's a gun. a gun. I can't take him seriously. But, dude, I, I, I love go, how go, well they captured the Urasawa <laughs> art style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought there were going to be another hit from that. There. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Noise Man Sound Insect OVA is officially available on YouTube with English subs. Uh, I saw this the year it came out at my anime club at uh, Cypress College. And um, it's okay. Not bad. Um, it's never been released physically. So, I'm going to encourage you to go watch it on YouTube. That's great. Come on. How long is it? Mm, it's like 15 minutes 15 15 15 15 15 oh okay but yoko kano did the music it was a commercially released in japan on dvd in limited quantities I know what I must do. <laughs> anyway, that's not going to load. So, uh, also more uh, watch more dubbed anime on Crunchyroll with the new dub discoverability feature. So, uh, apparently, oh. even though they give you the smallest fucking image ever to look at it, uh, previously, I guess you'd have to choose the anime you wanted to watch based on English dub, Spanish dub, Portuguese dub, season one, season two, right? Yeah, uh, that, and now, that's such a horrible system. Now you just go and watch the show and you change inside of the episode what language oh, it is. So like they're pulling an apple. Yeah. They're pulling an apple. They're saying, hey guys, we're introducing this feature that we should have had to begin with. It's not like Funimation had that in their player from the start. Why not? Here's a better idea, Crunchyroll. Free of charge, free of charge. If it's a fucking U.S. or North America goddamn region logging in, default the damn episode to English. I mean, it probably so, is now. So but, now uh, it has all of them that yeah. you can select from. So now, when you drop. log in, you can choose your preferred language. Doesn't always work, by the wow, way. Wow, that was really people. fast response to Lance's request, guys. Yeah, well, I gotta hard. give him credit. Right? Yeah, what do you right? mean it doesn't always Lance, work? They literally Lance just, literally just, just had this. Lance literally just wasted failed. all of our podcast magic on this shit. Thanks, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, man. Lance, what do you mean it doesn't always work? They literally just If it's just anything added like it. the Funimation <laughs> preference, the Funimation, you know, hey, set Lance. up in the settings or preference. It Lance, didn't let me work. let me explain something to you. Okay. As you've talked before, you have your browser set to clear cookies on clothes. So the of course what? it doesn't always work. <laughs> You're the clearing the cookie that logs what language you wanted it to be in. <laughs> I use it, I use the app That's on Funimation on me, and the mobile. That's it always is. <laughs> <laughs> I use I mean, if we want to talk about shit being on me, I love how you guys raised so much cane and like brought up so many times about the whole uh, about the whole like pickup line thing. And yet I'm not even in the poll. Oh, yeah, because I could only did do you, four you, people. Did you miss the part where you said you could only do four people? I could I only do, do I four people, people so I took you and myself of out of it. Oh, OK. I took you and myself out of it because uh, because mine was uh, that I uh, the kids are asleep and yours. We counted as the one from before. And then you gave a new one, which we're. 
When did I give one before? Please don't take it personally, Lance. I don't. I don't mean for you to. <laughs> I was. Just, I, I, I'm just. I'm just. Reese I'm bringing up <laughs> didn't cut. plan the segment well enough. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be brought up, so I understand for future reference. But continue. Uh, okay, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> just so you know. Um, I don't know if we talked about it on podcast. I think we did. Um, Sean Kleckner said it's unlicensable. There's something with the contract with its original license where it cannot be released again or something like that. But in typical uh, Sean Kleckner fashion, he just he, he didn't he, say he dropped why. this bomb on everybody and then said, "Nope, I'm out. No questions." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So also, Mamoru Oshi is teaching a five plus hour video course on anime and film directing. It says here the five hour course consists of 20 videos detailing Oshi's creative formulas, development methods, and tales from his life as a director in the pop culture industry. The course costs 75 US dollars and is available with English subtitles. So if you want to check it out, uh, it's in the doc somewhere. Go ahead and check, find it. I don't care. You can also, uh, probably, also, find it on, you can also probably find it on the high seas. <laughs> yeah. So Crunchyroll <laughs> laid off approximately 85 employees globally. I had a couple people send me this article as though it was some big, massive news. Uh, let me just read this part for you. Not cost-saving measure, but resolving redundancy between Crunchyroll and Funimation. They yeah, say that hey, about eight hey, times in this article. Hey, hey, Brad, can you can you have someone pick up that phone? Uh, yes. Brie, Brie, got it. Hello? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we fucking called it. <laughs> yeah so basically Crunchyroll is laying off their approximate 85 uh, employees go globally do you think that means those are Funimation employees no <laughs> those are Crunchyroll employees getting replaced by Funimation the the company that already uh, we already talked about they basically stole the skin of Crunchyroll to keep living without the bad PR <laughs> anyway uh, also throwing this out here most watched female youtube gaming streamers are all virtual youtubers literally one regular thought oh, wait is that a man what is that <laughs> no that's an anime girl <laughs> i don't know what i was saying <laughs> Your autocomplete needs some readjustment. When I when I look at it from this far away, I see like dark eyes, a bald head, and like black sideburns. But once I see it in full screen, like, oh yeah, it's a girl with uh, with pigtails. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, that's the thing. That's the state of the world. Uh, provided without comment. Moving on. Uh, Jason South said. It's called Podject. Uh, Podject. <laughs> Podcast magic, not realism. <laughs> okay. Well. By the way, uh, Luigi. Lance used it all. <laughs> by, by the way, Luigi, I'm surprised you don't every single time Discotex brought up, say, on the on the um, Kashi Mashi, they changed the subtitles. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm surprised you don't. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what? All right, thumbnails fifty percent done. <laughs> and yet All somehow right, it's better it. than what we got in the actual film. Can somebody create me like a virtual avatar that has that on me hundred percent of the time? <laughs> Did your VTuber model is now that? <laughs> you have a keyboard uh, in, on each side of you. Back to thy screen. So um, the director of Metropolis, Rintaro, has returned after 14 years with a manga film, quote unquote, based on Osaro Yamanaka's works. So um, it's called Nezum Nezumi Kozo Jirokichi, a manga film dedicated to Sadao Yamanaka. It's a short, silent anime that is based on Sadao Yamanaka making Nezumi Nezumi Kozo Jirokichi Edo Nomaki, a silent film in 1933. Uh, it's 25 minutes long and it's premiering at an international film festival. Uh, God knows if we'll get to see it, but do you even care? Moving on, City Hunter movie Angel Dust film gets a fall 2023 release. 
the final chapter begins. Anyway, also, for some reason, <laughs> boner cheering screening at Tokyo Theater is latest sign of returning to post-pandemic abnormal. <laughs> So if you haven't watched City Hunter, his catchphrase is Mokori, which basically means like erection, <laughs> blood welling up in my penis. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, the French... Basically, uh, doing... Yeah. Boner, 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 er. the, uh, the French uh, live action City Hunter movie is coming to Japanese theaters. And they're... Uh... Yeah. They're they're go. It's in Japanese theater. Moving on. <laughs> this is why we don't. We usually save the whiskey for the end. All right. In anime news, <laughs> this is also why I hope they don't. I'm waiting for the anime any news. more sequels because I was up till four thirty googling pics of dildos to Photoshop into, <laughs> into that <laughs> toaster. <laughs> Is that a new rule we'll have to That's follow? No more wild. sequel That's coverage? <laughs> Don't toy with me, Miss Nagataro. Second attack. ADR scriptwriter defends their use of memes in series localization. I am a storyteller, not a robot. <laughs> no, you're well, not a storyteller. You're an adapter of stories. I would just like to point told. out this is one more situation where Chat GPT could have done a better job. <laughs> So outside of the terminally online, most anime fans who choose to watch a given series with subtitles simply desire to watch a show with a translation accurate to the creator's original intentions. However, more and more quote unquote professional translators are feeling the need to put their own spin on a given script rather than providing fans with a proper localization. And as of late, such translators have felt emboldened enough to not only brag about their botched localizations, but also attack any fan who dares to criticize their work. In the new year alone, Bounding into Comics has already covered two such cases. One concerning Crunchyroll's translation of Onimai, I'm Now Your Sister, and the other for High Dive's take on My Life as Unikai-san's Dog. Now, in the latest instance of an intentionally botched anime localization, fans are up in arms over Crunchyroll's insertion of English memes into the translation into the translated subtitles for the second season of Don't Toy With Me, Miss Chojin Toro. The suspicious translation in question appears in the second season's seventh episode. I figured that's how you'd ski, senpai. Uh, during the scene where Nagatoro is teasing her senpai, Naoto Hachiyoji's Decision to switch from wearing glasses to contacts. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I like how it starts. During the scene where she's teasing her senpai. That's every episode. <laughs> God. <laughs> that's you, every scene. I, I'm going to need you to narrow it down. <laughs> so an adaptation of the same scene from chapter 73 of the manga in Nanashi's original work, Nagatoro taunts her senpai by asking, are you trying to change your image? Going to give up the four eyes look and try going for a hot guy vibe? Contacts. All right. Anyway, go for a hot guy vibe. No, I'm not. What does she change it to? What are they? Likewise, in a English fan translations for the scene in the anime, Nagator asks, "Are you trying to stop being a four-eyed kid and become a hot guy?" But <laughs> Crunchyroll's localization no. says, "Are you are you trying to stop being a four-eyed dork and become a Giga Chad?" <laughs> What? Oh no! I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's though. hilarious as fuck. He needs to say, "Are you trying to stop being a four-eyed virgin and become a Giga Chad?" See, if you oh. didn't botch the joke, I might have been okay with it. <laughs> a AC has some obsession with virginity. Watch out for this guy. But no, uh, the thing is, is that that actually is funny as fuck. It sounds Lance, like something Giga Chad. An abridge is, is funny too, but an abridge is completely like. It's okay, not, first, it's not first of all, hot people can people can look hot in glasses. I wear shades all the time. So I don't think people are disputing that, but I'm just saying I'm just saying I don't you can't look AC said this. AC slapped me if I'm wrong, but you said over and over again, you can't always have a one-to-one -one because of the way Japanese is. 
Well, Nagatoro is still in saying, this case, you're not going to change her mind. The entire <laughs> show is slapstick comedy, effectively. I mean, I don't, I don't approve of like manipulating shit, but the word Giga Chad is just—it sounds like something retarded she'd say. Okay, Lance. Oh fuck, this is so tiny. Oh, what and it's fucking, <laughs> it's fucking opera, so I can't even, <laughs> I can't even show you. Hold on, uh, let me close this. Yeah. Okay. Beep. My obsession, my obsession Beep. with virginity, is because the oh Giga my god, Chad I can't say anything. The virgin walk versus the Chad stride. Like it's this literally the meme template. The virgin, like. it the looks virgin like the versus the, right the Giga taking Chad. it up his ass like far too many times. He can't even like hold his legs right. No, he's just he's so got a swole that he can't fold. walk. <laughs> You're you, goddamn dude. Like 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 you stare at the crotch all the time. Is this what people with eyes act like? <laughs> Well, not everybody lost their eyes to gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. That's a... uh, oh, man. All right. But back I... on topic. I, I don't. When, I, I when those. Don't when me. those. Uh, when those. I think. The, at AC, I think you made that. You meant a burn, but you actually gave Lance a compliment. How? You can't get gonorrhea because you're lucky you have sex. <laughs> When uh, when those when those messages were going back and forth, my wife was like, "Oh, poor Lance!" And then Lance said, uh, "Well, she's got to do the household chores." She's like, "Fuck that guy!" <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, 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 man! If I if I did, it'd be a cuck horn for you. I'll pass. But <sighs> so it appears that this bot job was provided by returning first season ADR director Melly Grant, who di who directly ahead of the series second season premiere bragged via her personal Twitter account to offer quote much love to both Crunchyroll and voiceover production studio Bang Zoom for letting me run wild with this show. Uh. What? So she she thanked Bang Zoom and Crunchyroll for letting her uh, go off script. Of course, fans were far from happy about finding that yet another series had been butchered by Western meme speak, with many taking to social media to express their frustrations. On February 12th, Twitter user <laughs> at Political Awake <laughs> decried the problem when localizers insert meme culture into their translations is that they end up making the work dated which is that they end up making the work dated, which is egregious when it wasn't in the Japanese script. Can you imagine watching Death Note and Miss Amon Miss Anime? Miss? What? Misa Amane? Me did they mean Misa? Misa uh, uh God damn, you fucking terrible at spelling her name. Uh mentioned Rick Rolling because it was hot new meme of 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This tweet would soon be be found by Grant, who responded to Political Awake by claiming it used to be these English writers are taking too many liberties. Just stick to the translation. And now it's, oh no, the translators have betrayed us too. What? Okay. Completely exposing the self-aggrandizing and condescending mindset held by many modern, ja modern translators, Grant would then assert, when I write when I write, my goal is to honor the spirit of the scene and make the dialogue pop. I'm a storyteller, not a robot. Okay. So I think now is a good time uh, to pull this tweet out of my back pocket. <laughs> From the one and only unknown otaku. <laughs> Every time I hear the one-to-one -one argument, I can't help but think of stuff like this. From I Stand With Vic posting their L's online. All of these weebs complaining about bad localizations are manipulated by grifters using machine translations and misleading information. They also don't realize one-to-one -one Japanese English translations will result in very broken English. See also most NES games. To which Gams VN says professional translators will put out a 40 tweet long thread about why you shouldn't autopilot translate shikata nai into it can't be helped and then go on to translate it as that doesn't seem very poggers 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. See, when it comes to memes, because meme was it? Meme is basically an inside joke, uh, and you're basically referencing something in particular. So it's like yeah. when you put that in a localization, you're making a reference to a specific thing, and it's and like the, well, the trans, the the and, Japanese isn't alluding to that, yeah. right? And you're assuming that the entire fan base is in on the joke, which well, you know, like like let's say memes, poggers, that would be like if on the internet right like it's there's nothing more cringe the only time it has ever successfully transferred from internet to you know silver screen so to speak i think was the uh the blue blur uh or the the sanic meme in uh the blue devil in in the sonic movie now well i mean that that's specific but it's also like tangentially actually related to sonic yeah. in a way but, at least that's uh, but about sonic let's say, it's for not example, the, the, the giga chad meme yeah but, but that you movie know? also has the uh, example of the exact opposite with them doing the floss the floss that yes. dates the movie instantly right yes oh yeah that's the other aspect about it is that all these things date it which is why funimation back in the day i've mentioned this before that because the dub only came out when you got on blu-ray the memes they inserted in there were already dated by the time they got to it. So that's where you got, is this a zombie saying cool beans and stuff or whatever. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. what is it? Uh, yeah, so let's say Poggers, for example. That would be like saying, okay, so Nagatoro, I guess, is into Twitch and all that stuff. Like, that's what I mean by it's kind of references something specific. Hmm. Right. So for those of us who don't know, what the fuck does Poggers even mean? It's right, because we're all old. Is like some streamer made a face and he became an emote or whatever. I is Poggers the name of the dude? Yeah, I thought he was like some sports guy. Like he he like a and then they removed the Poggers emote after some weird uh, guilt by association thing that Twitch didn't want to be associated with them because yeah. something which dumb. Like Only... you're racing in a Are we even history, allowed so like to say Pepe. Poggers on Twitch now? <laughs> The only, the only literal only thing this conversation has done for me is just reaffirm me not wanting to use that word. Well, we're going to use it in the next easy. translation. Just I, we're saying. just saying that that's how we when when we see Giga Chad, that's what that's the impression uh, it puts on well, us. Well, look, look, my, or at least for look, me, my I thought process say. for Nagataro is that the entire show <sighs> is one big joke and everything they do is just constant uh they're just berating the audience with one random crazy ass set of words and set of circumstances just after the other like i would not take this show my logic is just that if all. you're if you're okay with giga chad but not okay with poggers then i i don't know you're gonna I have didn't, to draw I'm that just, line i'm saying i don't i'm just saying i think the word is stupid i didn't say giga chat isn't stupid i think i think the entire dialogue not the entire but a lot of the dialogue for uh nagataro is stupid okay i'm gonna drop like, this, this without comment not... before we get too far away from it what now hi everybody it's athena green screen time are you ready mm -mm -mm. first green screen <gasps> poggers <gasps> Poggers, Athena Pog, <gasps> dear Pog. <gasps> next one, next one. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now this is epic. Mm -mm -mm. Next one, next one. Okay, this is cringe. Kore wa cringe this. Eso es. I think I need an exorcism now. Why? Pull <laughs> my virginity back. <laughs> Why did we watch that? Uh, yeah, that last one was uh, pretty accurate. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's actually, well, I, I realized there's like another 25 way. seconds for, for... on that thing. I was like, no, let's not. <laughs> All right. So, so for for every meme that you enjoy, there's a meme that makes you cringe that you don't like, and you're not at the beholden uh, to which me or you're beholden to whichever meme they select for you and then it's like if they choose a bad one it's like well you're screwed and also like that's like saying, that's it, like it, it imagine you're it. watching uh you're watching a kaiju movie and uh and she's like hey bae 
<laughs> no, they they like describe the earth shattering, like like the earth shaking as the kaiju comes out of like the volcano or whatever. And it's like then Godzilla did the Harlem Shake, bro. Like, <laughs> like that'd be so cringe. Yo, yeah, that was on flea. That was on flea. Harlem was shaking. You're also taking two situations that one would be quote unquote serious, whereas like I said, Nagataro's the entire show is one big joke. Look, you're okay to still like it. <laughs> oh, I'm no, I'm addressing. I, I'm, whether... All I'm trying to say is, is that my opinion. Like, I understand where you're coming from the kaiju thing. That makes sense because it would be okay, a stressful let, let's, situation. Let's pause for a second and just say that when I read the Giga Chad line, at least two people laughed about. It, okay, <laughs> the stance of the article, the stance of the podcast, are two different things. I went on to show you. The I stand with Vic fails people talking about the the one to one translator people. I am not one of those. I think I am all for localization. I just don't want it to be cringe. You don't right? localization. Yeah, yeah localization. As long, as long no as vocalization. The, as long as we get the spear and no self insert bullshit. Yeah. I'm as long it. as I don't have to hear uh, Gamergate lines in prison school again. Yeah. Oh God! Like, uh, that, like, that Jason, was, like mm. Jason himself said, adding adding memes to Steinsgate dub absolutely fit. Yes, just because I think that Steinsgate the localization is better than the Japanese, except for the son of a bitch. Right, line. that's the one there. <laughs> that's just, the one part that's better. Uh, <laughs> but I don't. The, when you when you listen to it in Japanese, you don't really hear this, but you read it in the subtitles. All the leet speech mm -hmm. that they're doing. And I'm glad that they didn't transfer that over um, because that is some major cringe. A, a really good um, example is the Dragon Ball movies, Dragon Ball Z movies, mm -hmm. because that edge that they added to the dialogue. Like I went back and I rewatched a bunch of the original, like the first like seven Dragon Ball movies. And when you watch it in the Japanese with like direct trans, the, you know, the closer, you know, to the Japanese, just, you know, the text. Can you give us a direct example of like one of the uh, Well, actually one that keeps coming, always comes to mind uh, is because you brought this one up. Uh, was Goku's like, get out of my way, and when he's yelling at uh, yeah, so uh, here's the problem, Lance. You're describing the uh, you're describing the, the pioneer dub, yeah, the so, ocean group, it's a dub, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying that, um, that there's Funimation redubbed that with yeah, their cast, yeah. and the audio sucks ass, like, so, um, yeah, when so Brad it, it brought really, it up, he was making the opposite point, yeah. Uh, well, I'm just saying, like. To, if we're going to take your point, uh, and I'll run with it for you, um, I agree. Like, that's one of my favorite examples of good localization. Because in the situation where you are fighting for your life in order to protect your kid, you're not you're not going to you're not going to take anybody's shit, right? You're going to be throwing f bombs around. You're going to just you're going to be intimidating, right? Versus PG language, like. I'll Darn, have to rewatch that Dragon strong. Ball Z. <laughs> You'd be like, that... fuck that guy in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. You know, localization, one of the reasons that I very much enjoy anime that is loose with the script. Um, if, if most of the dialogue is crucial exclusively to the scene it's in and not an overarching plot where something needs to be said because it is important and relevant later, then go ham, you know. Um, when you dub Yu Yu Hakusho and you give the villain the Irish accent, give me more. Of <laughs> I fucking love that shit. That was the flavor you mean to gin? my otherwise like bland a... anime experience growing up, you know. Uh, and so I, I'm all for it. Like I absolutely love Jace in Dragon Ball with the Australian accent. Yeah, and stuff. hell yeah, man! I fucking love that shit. Give me more, you know. There's also that Australian action guy in, in Yu Hawk show, the one with the Mohawk. Oh, Watch Club uh, Blade. No, I'm, I'm remembering <laughs> right. who you're talking about. So anyway, um, but getting back to this, they say continuing the scriptwriter explained. So for example, in this scene, you may not immediately understand their use of the term Chad in 2028. But because I've adjusted Sakura's setup to refer to him as the muscle head from the other day, you should have no problem following the rest. Thanks for attending my talk, she concluded. If they weren't so... Pompous about yeah, it? Yeah, if they weren't so pompous about it. I think it'd be... If they weren't so conceited and like... 
rude about I'm it. I'm on my high horse and you're the peasants. Show. Yeah. It's like, it, this is, I kind of feel like, um, I sort of feel like I'm rooting for the WNBA as a, <laughs> as a concept, right? right? Like people are like, no, I don't want your localization. I want your, you know, direct translation. It's like, no, 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 bro. You got to check out the indie movies. They're some of them are really good, you know? And it's like, you're rooting for the genre, but everyone that's in the news is in the news. Cause it sucks ass. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and so there's just a bunch of negative microscoping on the fact that these people are so full of themselves and can't, yeah, you know, can't function in a world where, where everybody is a critic, which honestly, most of these people do not belong in the industry simply because they cannot uh, function in this world, you know? Right. Um, but the Twitter rights. <laughs> they, they but back in the day, racism. anime dubs were lit because they were case closed. Let's use more, like I'm uh, watching that, like I said, and case closed is a very <laughs> like. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, anime, fucking the the more localized it was, like the more edge there was to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're not gonna have a dub that's like Black Lagoon ever again. Oh fuck, man! I oh, just need dude, English in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till our AI uh, overlords can uh, recreate that accent. <laughs> Ranma, the fact that shampoo is that weird fucking like, Chinese accent. I fucking accent love that, that accent. <laughs> I wouldn't. Oh, man. I'd, I'd, I don't know, if they, Hashtag if they I miss back, ocean dubs. <laughs> yeah, if they were brought it, so, that back, I would, yeah, want, I'd want them to keep that. They did black and good too, didn't they? Like that. So unsurprisingly, Grant's staunch defense of her work would only draw further criticism from fans. Among the sea of subsequent backlash was Japanese Twitter user at NightX30, who retweeted Grant's initial response tweet and criticized, quote, what do you think of scriptwriter Taku Kishimoto's story? Westerners love to steal from us. Hmm. Interesting. I love the source material, Grant then claimed in return. When I write, I rely on two things, the translation provided to me of the show and any translations of the manga I can find. I do my best to honor the story and make sure the dialogue is organic and feels human. I want our actors to succeed. Look, Zoomers are not human, okay? <laughs> I do think, no, I think if you take a direct translation and read it in English, the grammar and syntax alone cause issues that need solving. 100% agree. Additionally, we say different things in different numbers of words, so cues are often over or underwritten and need to be filled out or trimmed. Probably the most contentious thing we do, and this comes in frequent, infrequently with comedy, is in order for a joke to land or a moment to have the same effect slash impact that was probably present in the Japanese script, she would conclude... Uh, uh, we do sometimes need to rework the dialogue from the ground up. But once again, rather than quelling the outrage, Grant's continued explanations only served to fan its flame. Following three more days of criticism, a frustrated Grant would level one final defense by clarifying, for whomsoever re needs to hear it, I am not a translator! I am an ADR scriptwriter! <laughs> it is my actual job to finesse dialogue so that it sounds great using translations provided to me by my clients as a foundation. If you don't understand the work I do, maybe don't come at me over it. Anyway, that's the end of that article, I guess. All right. It was worth it. Totally worth reading. Glad we spent the time on it. It was definitely poggers. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> so uh, a new okay. uh, Pikachu character is coming to Pokemon after uh, Ash's retirement. Uh, naturally, of course, because uh, they can't let the literal mascot of the show stop being in it in every episode. So uh, Captain Pikachu here is going to uh, guide you on your quest. <laughs> also, uh, the male protagonist has been confirmed as Roy. <laughs> Liko is the girl. <laughs> um, and uh, apparently the GS ball is finally going to be revealed. <laughs> The evolution of the GS ball. Yeah, it's this. That was the prototype, and finally, the GS ball, steampunk, steampunk GS ball is going to be showing up. So, look forward to that. Also, uh, shirt idea. Moving on. <laughs> All right, 
living together is loony in level one demon lord in the one room hero promotional video so uh this guy looks giga chad and he lives with a woman secretary who wears a school swimsuit on top of her i'm not going to try to figure that out moving on uh the Demon Sword Master of Excalibur Academy TV anime reveals main cast. So Big Sister Chan uh, protects little boy. Got some legs on this this slate of anime. This character reminds me of um, what's it, Melty Blood? Tsukihime? Huh. You know what I'm talking about? Type Moon. Type moon. Does she have white hair? Brad, is she that a tall. white hair? I think it's violet, maybe. Ah, what do you guys think? Me. Is that white hair? It's light colored. <laughs> anyway, that time I that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Season three is debuting spring twenty twenty four. Hell yeah! Yay! Watch Club oh, when it's go. we're never Yay. gonna catch on. <laughs> At By least way, I'm kind of zoomed on past it a bit. Too, <laughs> you zoomed back, past it a bit too quickly, but. uh the new Pikachu uh, for the new season or whatever uh, gave me uh, uh, Digimon vibes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so they put <laughs> when they the had a, strap on on his arms. When they had a new Agumon in season five. <laughs> oh yeah, when they bring him back and it's a different Agumon. But... No, no, they don't bring him back. They no, I mean they bring him back one. as a as a mainstay species in the show, but it's not but they the have same to differentiate one. him from a different. So they give does, him. A does stupid... he have a new voice? He, he's voiced by Takato from season three, the main character. Ah, oh, cringe. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a literally a different, like, completely different entity. So it makes sense. Anyway. Also, I saw this and couldn't help but notice that the logo looks like a giant erect penis. <laughs> High speed etoile, or however you pronounce that in French. Etoile? Etoile. <laughs> Is that is that French for erection? <laughs> Isn't that star? <laughs> no, I think it means star. <laughs> so um, I just can't wait to see this racing on Rainbow Road. Uh, that anyway, looks like on. the Super Mario movie poster. <laughs> uh, so just a quick reminder that uh, Mashal is coming April 2023. So it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, it is the story of if Rock Lee went to Hogwarts. And also couldn't do any magic, so he had to do everything with his fists. He had to chat his way through. Yeah. Also, since you weren't here, I didn't know if you wanted to cover this, so I'm just putting it in the dock. Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush! TV anime summons a new cast. I don't know if I... I don't know. It just kind of feels like it's Well, missing. they're keeping up with the hair being ridiculous. It's, it's really just missing that Egyptian god vibe. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> I the mean, mysticism. you've been out the of the scene for long enough. They've been missing thing. that for a long time. I just like yeah. everything about it just feels like a, a piece of crap compared to the original, the energy and thought that went into the original. Also, this guy's a fan of Under the Scope, as you can see with his UTS pin. <laughs> is that is that a Yu-Gi-Oh thing? I have no All idea. All right, cool. Thanks for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I shall survive using potions. Or butt plugs, as it looks like. <laughs> that's, that's the secret. Some potions are taken rectally. <laughs> suppository. I shall, su I shall survive using suppositories. <laughs> also, uh, Hiromi Arakawa's autobiographical manga has a premiere date for the anime. Uh, July 2023. <sighs> Creator of Full Metal Alchemist, for a reminder. Mm -hmm. Uh, Magical Girl Destroyers has new cast members. Uh, Just keeping Stealth this weed in the products coming at, in the future. Uh, and then there's also these guys, uh, eight Uber nerds. More Stealth Weed <laughs> products coming in the future. <laughs> uh, I'm just real hyped for this. I, I, I want to watch it real bad. Comes out in April. I was introduced to a, a band called Yandere Chainsaw Regurgitation to, uh, the other day. <laughs> so just thought you'd know. It seems in Sounds the vein great. of Magical Girl Destroyers. Also, under Ninja, just a quick look at the uh, image, I guess. Okay. Okay. Last podcast. 
I asked Reese to share the Blue Orchestra article as just a it's it's further along. It's going to come out soon. Remember, John Williams is doing the score. I wanted to remind you guys, Star Wars composer John Williams to provide soundtrack for Ao no Orchestra. Ao is Japanese for blue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. This blue is... Orchestra. <laughs> Same dude this who article. I feel like hasn't had a bad piece of music what? like ever. <laughs> John Williams. Yeah. Yeah. So so this article has somebody announcing it. They have a literal fucking picture of John Williams in the announcement and everything, right? A project is underway with John Williams, a master who works on movie music such as Star Wars and Jurassic Park, and I personally love, and Deutsche Gramophone, the largest classical label. When I was in high school, I was playing... I don't even mention the thing in there, actually. I don't know who show manga one is. But anyway, the point is... That I saw this, young musician take a bow in Blue Orchestra TV anime key visual. Oh, here's the key visual. That's great. But boom, what is this? It says character designs by Kazuaki Morita and music by Akira Kosemura. Jokes on you. you John John Williams Williams is actually the voice of the main character in (laughs) high school. (laughs) Oh. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Maybe maybe that isn't a thing. Well, what, uh, what's the meme about like expectations and day ruined? What was oh, um, my my day is ruined. I don't know. I can't shatter my expectations. My says, oh no, pranked. So One Punch Man manga illustrator Yusuke Murata teases his first anime project. The animation will be based on Journey to the West. Wow. Wow. And it's called Zayuki. You know, like Sayuki. Whoa. <laughs> Except this time, instead of being a uh, yaoi bait, there's a decidedly hot pig girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Speaking She's of a mix saying, between there's a monkey. Um, Yoko Bulma and uh, Puar. Right? Uh, yeah, no, not she's Puar. Also... Puar. Not Puar. She's... The pig guy, whatever the Puar, pig uh, Oolong. U- Oolong. Come on. Fucking load, tweet. I mean, they're bringing new meaning to pork in it. Fuck it. God damn it. I just got it to show up and now it's gone. <laughs> so hold on. For the the anime sake. he's working on, so he's just. He's. He's being like one of the animators, or he like it okay, made so the story I, and concept. It says it's coming from manga. Village Studio. I think maybe that's just his studio. Is that One Punch Man season four's studio? <laughs> season three is just be season season three be mapper and then season four will be this one. <laughs> I just opened the goddamn tweet then. Fine. <laughs> She out Yoko's Yoko, he said, with perfect timing for the illustrative purposes of the podcast, because the internet was so blazing fast that it that, that it loaded. Cool. All right. From Village Studio. Wow. Look forward to it. All right, moving on. <laughs> oh. Animax India censoring all the breasts and cleavage. We are entering a world that hates men so much. <laughs> that Animax, they are literally a TV network, belittling the, the women, the female form. <laughs> literally anything that would make a man uh, procreate needs to be banned. Uh, men can only butt sex each other and end the species. <laughs> <laughs> Animax, a TV network that airs anime, is apparently in the testing phase in India. And many discovered that various shows have been censored, specifically the harmless cleavage of female characters and only serving as another part of the massive censorship agenda present in all forms of entertainment. Being in the testing phase... The shows are only available with Japanese audio and no English subtitles. But more importantly, there are giant blurry clouds applied over the chests of female characters with exposed cleavage. 
Katsute Kamidata Kemonotachi A is, was one of the anime affected by this absurd oversensitive censorship, and even movies such as Jujutsu Kaisen Zero were affected. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero's verbal sexual jokes were also allegedly censored by way of muted audio and altered subtitles. Naturally, exposed male chests were completely unaffected. That's sexist. Kore wa cringe desk. <laughs> yeah. If we can't have female cleavage, we should not have male I'm telling you, they are trying to they are trying to make the only acceptable sexuality getting railed in the ass. <laughs> The IGN article on the subject also unsurprisingly spreads lies about the anime medium by falsely claiming anime has often been controversial in the way it depicts women, adding further insult to injury to those desperate to watch anime in its completely original, unaltered form. Look, I just want to see anime titties. That's all. all right? so, uh, I mean, we don't have to complicate this by talking about it being controversial or not. I'm a grown-ass adult, and anime titties are completely oh, cool. healthy to look at. Oh, hold on. Before we get any far, before we get away from Chojin Rift says the English title for this <laughs> series is the Abandoned Sacred Sacred Beast. So they should rename it to the Abandoned Sacred Breath. <laughs> <laughs> Censoring breasts is misogyny. <laughs> it's also un-American. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Odd Taxi reveals a new root route of Odd Taxi Project. So there's a new manga. Uh, I don't know. This is news. Never. There you go. Uh, I will buy Odd Taxi when it gets a physical release. Moving on. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure manga names part nine protagonist Jodio Joe Star. Get it? Joe Dio? Oh. I, I thought they already tried to be clever with that. Giorgio. <laughs> he looks like the freaking, uh, the guy in part five. Uh, what's, the guy who had the Metallica stand. He always had his hood up. Uh, Baccio? Baccio? No, 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 no. No, the Metallica stand that had, he was a villain. He was trying to kill, um, what's he, what's his name? Oh, fuck. Um, I'll pull up a picture. Move on. But no. Bucciarati? He was trying to kill Bucciarati? No, not Bucciarati. He had the Metallica stand. What's the Metallica stand name? I'm trying to give was you the name of the guy. Where he controls all the metal. Risotto. Risotto Nero. Risotto. There we go. Risotto. Thank you, E. Castro. Always one step ahead of the rest of us. Thank you, E. Castro. But all right. Arrow yeah. Manga website EMD second booted from Amazon affiliates over explicit images. Um... So I can't quite tell what this is. I think it might be an affiliate. A company that was an affiliate to Amazon got booted from the affiliate program. I don't know. We're just going to read it real quick. EMD Second, a well-known website that has dedicated itself to showing off newly released Arrow Manga volumes, has revealed that Amazon kicked them from their affiliate program over having explicit images, despite having been doing so for countless years. And once again, demonstrating the company's love for censorship. EMD Second explained the situation, saying they considered going back and censoring their past posts, but decided such a monumental task would take too much time. Quote, Amazon closed themselves off as my associate, and I received a communication from them saying, quote, this is a result of introducing indecent illustrations intended for adults and banner ads using them. End quote. I, re I received a similar communication before, and I tried applying mosaics to the most recent ones, but it was no use. There, were, there are simply too many news articles to update that were written up to now, and as expected, this scope of corrections is impossible to carry out by myself, so I have obediently come to accept this, even though I'm writing articles for adults in the first place. Once again, you cannot like the anime titty. It is against the code of conduct of your corporate overlords who want you to be gay and not furthering the species. Uh, anyway, um, economic censorship to prevent, uh, titty. There you go. That is why <laughs> it is so important that you support the OCA podcast who continues to be, <laughs> thank you, who continues to bring you the anime titty on a nightly basis or 
semi weekly <laughs> occasionally. Nightly basis, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, so are we done with this article for now? No. In the future, I believe DMM, Fanzet, and DL site will be my main associates. So if, if you could purchase from there, I would be pleased. Thank you. Also, Amazon Associates will disappear from the latest article. I will continue to update the blog itself as much as I can. So please continue to support EMD, the second Amazon, as well as credit card companies are infamous for imposing restrictions and censorship on users, especially if they work in adult products. Okay, so Go before we go any further, this is Risotto. Oh, sure you can flex those pecs on stream. <laughs> was it was it stand master of puppets or something? No, Metallica. It was just they called it. It's Metallica. literally called Metallica. Yeah, it was. They called it Metallica in the dub. In the dub. Yeah. How did I miss that? <laughs> uh. Can we get the uh, bear man chest and gay fetish gear off? <laughs> 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 well, can we bring the titties back for a moment i just need to cleanse <laughs> oh, yeah, here's a big tit <laughs> <laughs> fine i'll do it myself <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh. <laughs> all right so i just want to read a couple headlines to you <laughs> Anti-JK Rowling activists creates a list to catalog Twitch players who stream Hogwarts Legacy. So basically a guy set up a, a website where you could find out if your favorite streamer had logged any hours playing Hogwarts Legacy so that you could feel justified in turning on them mercilessly uh, because for some reason you can't stand H Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, taking it a step further, a transgender Montana state legislator voiced approval for a Hogwarts Legacy Twitch tracking list. Quote, it's bad to pay for a game based on an IP that directly funds a turf. Uh, so, yeah, let's we need a government run database of turf supporters so that they can be round up and put in the in the reeducation camps and or killed. Is what I'm hearing from this Montana legislator. Uh, unfortunately for them, Hogwarts <laughs> Legacy revealed a transgender character. Uh, but unfortunately for them, the activists were still not happy. So it'd be uh, turf to not play the game. Hilariously, the transgender character's name is Serona Ryan. So it not only has a male name, Ryan, but the first three letters of Serona is S-I-R or Sir. So, <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> You can't fucking win. <laughs> uh, and, and then, then and the, Rona, of course, in there. Right. So. The boycott failed, however, because in less than two weeks, Hogwarts Legacy made just as much as Black Panther Wakanda Forever's entire theatrical run. In Chojin Month, no less. <laughs> oh, Chojin the Chojin movie. <laughs> and then <laughs> J.K. Rowling received a public apology from a trans activist and drag queen who falsely accused her of being a Nazi once, once she threatened to sue. <laughs> so there's that. Now, um, I just want to remind you that Sea of Stars uh, got an August release date. The demo is currently out. It's launching the 29th of August. And just a quick reminder of uh, what it kind of looks like. Any second now. I just wanted to kind of showcase for a minute uh, the neat pixel art effects that it has. Seems very immersive. Minimally woke. Probably a little woke. <laughs> it uses an engine sort of like Sprite Lamp. That it actually lights up the atmosphere when you're like holding torches and stuff, as you can see, they're like lit up or their aura or something. I don't know. You should sense about 2023 be lit. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, special guest composer Yasunori Mitsuda, who actually is in the uh announcement video. I guess I'll just keep going on the thing here. Uh, so this is uh, just really cool, you know, great graphics, very colorful. Um, seems to be grabbing the uh, fishing minigame thing from uh, Breath of Fire. 
So just like a real awesome nostalgic return to old JRPG styles. Some of the bosses are massive. Still pixel art. Looks fucking cool. Anyway. It looks awesome. I can't wait to play it. Even It'll be the first game I've played since fucking Silent Hill. Oh, I guess I looped it. gave this cool. exact pitch like a couple podcasts ago. I just want to remind everybody to keep an eye out for it. Oh, I guess there is more. Okay. Anyway, dear Lord, will you just fucking end? <laughs> That's how you get transported. I agree, though. Uh, I want to download the demo tonight. Anyway, cool, cool, cool. PP got massively big when I read this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, <That's> Legend of <laughs> the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom art book has reportedly been leaked online. Uh, Random Eleven sort of talked a little bit about this last podcast regarding the the uh, the leaks that came out and the logo or icon rather that's on the art book that was also on the uh, Switch exclusive, Switch console. like the the special edition or whatever. So the point about this, just so you guys know is if you are going to seek out the leaks, uh, they do include spoilers for the game. And then, Oh, it didn't ask me if I'm okay. Seeing lewd images. That's interesting. Pardon me for double check that. Whoops. (laughs) Whoops. <laughs> While I scroll to the bottom to double check. Uh, oh, cool. It didn't uh, It didn't undo it. Cool. Maybe they realized there was nothing to be ashamed of <laughs> from the beginning. So, uh, unlike, unlike India. <laughs> yeah, so Resident Evil 4 Remake replaces Ashley's skirt with a skirt. No! It's almost like checks notes resident evil 3 remake did that <laughs> but it is still tragic so they say here they the resident they evil can 4 no longer remake. see the stain oh yeah the resident evil 4 remake has seemingly taken a page from the book of the censored virtual re- reality edition of the original game as recent footage of the game appears to have ashley wearing a skirt as opposed to a skirt the same design decision that was used in resident evil 3 remake for the original jill costume so they up they uploaded a, a screenshot that shows that her skirt appears to actually be shorts from the back with a little flap in the front that looks kind of like a skirt. Uh, I mean, I think her outfit overall looks way better than it did in the original game. Um, they do seem to be trying to hide the fact that she's actually wearing a, a skirt in all the promotional stuff and apparently in the original game you could do way more things than i was able to do on the gamecube version (laughs) yeah apparently apparently there is in fact uh, some form of sweat stain or whatever i don't know but we're not gonna (laughs) linger on that too much uh we're we're not gonna zoom in on that in the podcast you can do that on your own (laughs) i i didn't test this but i probably should have for copyright flagging but we're just gonna risk it Oh, there's no button. Hold on. Doing this through Opera is different. Okay, fun thing about the uh, Resident Evil thing. Am I wrong? Doesn't she get kidnapped from her school so it totally makes sense that she's in a skirt? And second point, like, uh, why the uh, impromptu clothes change? That's more suspicious than not. Can you guys hear that? Me? Oh, well, I heard, I heard, a, like, I heard a thud. You, you can't hear that, right? No. no. Fuck. I don't have the option to share screen with audio now. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, maybe I have to do it. Oh, I can only do it through. Uh, I can only do it through a tab in the same window. So I'm going to have to open this in Opera, which I can't because then it's going to play the fucking thing on the side. Here's what I'll do. I'll unplug the headphones and you'll just get to hear a shittier version of it. That'll be. More likely to not to, to not fail me on uh, copyright flags. So you want the copyright flag? Here we go. No. He said not fail him. It's a it's a tragedy. 
especially the way that they showcase it in here because they do it backwards. There. You guys remember the ballistics? This. Small world, eh? Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. How rude! And I don't. So yeah, that's from that's from the Resident Evil Four original, and this is what it's changed to. Hey, I see you playing with some Senorita. Senorita, her name is Ashley. You are. Who are you? I see that the president's. So that's mega cringe. I well, don't know the why they line. they decide to like ruined. redub. Uh, or, no, the my game. day is ruined. <laughs> I don't know. It might be less. There's of a another clip in here, but who cares? Anyway, any thoughts? The uh, oh, attack on anything. Please, Go ahead, it, my disappointment oh. is measurable. If you guys were talking that whole time, I couldn't hear you because I have the settings in here set to my uh, headphones. So that's wonderful. <laughs> and I still don't hear you. That's also wonderful. Well, everyone stopped uh, talking wonderful. is what happened. We did stop talking. Can you hear us hey. now? I can. Okay. So uh, whatever you said, I agree wholeheartedly. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. We're already in release. <laughs> oh, wow. I think that's the secret to making the podcast run really quickly is just like disconnecting his <laughs> <Cut> people off. <laughs> and you know I can't hear you. We're yeah, moving I on. I have. OK, just so that everybody's clear. I have work tomorrow and my boss said, and I quote, you're going to be working late, everyone. Don't worry. I'll provide dinner. So I'm going to have a very full day tomorrow. So I'm a little eager to, <laughs> to get to bed. No, no, no. I'm actually saying as a positive thing, believe it or not. I'm saying, so I, okay, all right, I am, let's do this more. <laughs> for, for the audience, I would just like to say, I am preparing a Google form that I intend to give you guys that for Operation Improve the OCA podcast. Uh, so I don't know. If, if you have suggestions, go to the Discord um for what what channel should we put this in? I don't want you oh, to tell me update. how we can improve the podcast yet. I want you to give us suggestions for what the form should include so we can collect the data for the maximum, you know, uh, like, so for example, something I'm considering doing is uh, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you value the pickup segment versus the right stuff segment versus watch club, you know, um, and then you'll have an opportunity to give notes on each of the segments and stuff. Uh, if there's anything else that you guys would like, you know, like um, something else I could put is uh, what is the ideal length of the podcast between one hour to eight hours, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, so we could, if you want to put that in video developments, if you have any suggestions for what should go into the form, uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll include them. Uh, and then hopefully by next podcast, I'll have the form ready for you guys. Um, and I'll, I'll put it in the Discord so you guys can access it over time. You don't need to do it right away. But anyway, um, Daddy Joker and more DC manga are getting an official English language release. So, yeah, um, that cringe story about Superman eating uh, dishes across Japan where they couldn't draw his hands to save their life is uh, getting a physical release over here. So that's, that's cool. <coughs> Close. Go away. All right. Uh, also getting a physical release is the one where the Joker raises uh, Batman for some reason. Moving on. 10 years with Hayao Miyazaki documentary is acquired by, um, I'm kids. sorry. The documentary series is being acquired by G kids. Um, so the original series de debuted in Japan back in 2019. It's now coming over to English audiences, courtesy of G kids. Uh, how many episodes is it? Four, Four part documentary series. Okay. Uh, still don't know how much that is, but we'll find out at some point. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Reese dragon ball, super superhero 4k. Why does it look like the regular K? 
Because it is the regular K, but it says uh, 4K and specially released special coming this release. fall. Yeah. Mm. This so is you're saying advertising. This... Wait a minute. Well, one this that's wasn't already... in my right stuff package. <laughs> what? This wasn't in my right stuff package. Did I no, buy this shit, earlier? Because it doesn't come out till March 14th. Oh, okay, cool. It says it right there in the picture. Ah, I wasn't looking. Did you There's guys go through all right these? Stuff. You did, right? Nothing. There's nothing on right stuff. All right. So, no right on. stuff timestamp. The uh, the 8K uh, Blu-rays are coming out in the fall for uh, North America? Yes. 4K. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, Japan is getting a Blu-ray of the 56 episodes of 8-Man. In Japan, known as Tobor the 8-Man, I think. Or maybe that was the U.S. Re release. I don't know. Anyway, it has a really cringe dub. I'm pretty sure if, if Discotech can, they'll release it. If they need the dub, I don't know what to tell you. I do have it. <laughs> it's in the storage unit, though. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, yeah. That is a thing. Moving on. If you would like to support the OCA podcast, there are many such ways. One of those such ways is shopping on Stealth Weeb, which loaded very quickly. Yes, podcast match is still there. God damn it. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is oh <laughs> oh that was weird. <laughs> anyway, so there's lots uh there's lots of merch here you can buy. Uh there is lots of merch I would like to make. That's one of the other things I'll probably include in the uh if I had things my way. I would be making enough money off of the podcast that I could devote enough time per week to get a new product on Stealth Weeb every single week. That's what I'd like to get. Unfortunately, we're not there yet, but with your help <laughs> and your shopping and buying things on uh, ocapodcast.com uh, slash store, that's another place you can go. Um, I do have, uh, so last podcast, you guys covered the, uh, the article about, or no, wait, was that last podcast or no, no, no. it was a podcast before that. I think we covered the article about the, uh, the men who were slain by the cocks with knives, the fighting cocks. Mm, yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I made it <laughs> random 11 said, uh, is like, how do you even get killed <laughs> by a rooster? Right. And, uh, and I came back with, while you hosted the podcast, he studied the blade. So I've got a, I've got a samurai rooster shirt that'll be coming out soon. Cause that was just too funny to not make. Um, and are then, you going uh, with, pop, yep. Are you going with the, uh, the one, you, the first one you showed me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to finish the that edges. Looks the best. It looks so good, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not going with the second one that Dolly drew where the rooster is holding the sword in its hand and also its dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although it was hilarious as a concept, the execution just didn't look that funny. <laughs> I mean, it was funny looking, but it wasn't shirt worthy. It was like the back of your yearbook when you're bored funny. <laughs> All right. So pop team, epic fashion goods, uh, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? The point is you can own a shirt that you can use to flip people off. Oh, that's cool. Right? I, I may or may not have spent a good 30 minutes trying to find a way to buy this from Japan for my wife because uh, she requested it. Anyway, Were there's you also... successful? The, no. Wow. I gave up because there was too much to do still. Anyway, moving on. And also, I could just make shirts that do that for her. <laughs> uh, so in, in uh, figures news, Toru and Kana are dressed as maids and looking adorable. So cute. Uh, also, Kotoko from Inspector also looking somewhat adorable. A friggin' raccoon. Uh, yep. It's a kind of a fat dog, isn't it? <laughs> like... Not really a raccoon so much as it's just a fat animal. <laughs> anyway, uh, Rem embraces her child self in adorable ReZero figure. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. How did she give birth to her own self? It was Ram. 
ram rammed her ramming ram oh and here's one of those pro shippers they are sisters this is disturbing <laughs> this is a problematic ship <laughs> blowing the whistle on them. <laughs> arrest them yeah so cute <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yeah, yeah Reese, quit popping over there. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, you haven't heard nothing yet. <laughs> anyway, that is a thing that you can buy. Uh, and then there's this Uzaki Chan uh, oh, sweater figure. So cute. <laughs> the, <laughs> the pictures uh, leave a lot up to the imagination because they refuse to give you a certain angle. That would answer a very in intense question. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I want to buy it just to see if there's but that. Judging angle. by this face, I think we know the answer. It is drafty. <laughs> she has her. I don't think she ever opens her eyes in the series, except maybe once or twice. No. But they have a face plate. And green line. Eye. If you're a fan of Egyptian gods and legs and ass. And, and right, the, the, I have the an Anubis to sell you. <laughs> yeah, one of the fake ladies or whatever is hitting it. A bunny mm. figure. Yeah, damn. I would slow down, but there is a close up. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. In honor of so cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Mazda goes crazy in the sweetest way by by making an insanely detailed chocolate Miata. Because why? <laughs> because why not? <laughs> How, what like temperature it. you think you got to keep this thing to be able to put it together? Like literally the, the temperature coming off of my thumbs trying to assemble it would melt this thing. <laughs> Yeah. Like you try uh, to get be the so four ships out of the freezer, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> it's cool though. <laughs> yeah. I like in the one picture, like go up to the top. <laughs> go, to the, go to the very first image. I'm trying. You see how the, the wheels are it almost makes it look like you, it has an actual the you know, workable steering. It has an axle right here, bro. No, no, and, and I didn't say action, actual working steering. Like, you can turn the wheel. Like, you could turn the... I don't know if that's going to work, but... But it's got know. an axle. The uh, the wheels are turned the same way in every yeah. shot, so it probably is just a dynamic pose. Probably tastes anyway, like shit, though. Buy it and find out, all right? <laughs> All right, so in in uh yeah, so I know it's a tanuki bra. <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> to Central Park Media's credit, not that they are good, they had Mil Varna from Maze say "big sister brother" in the English version. In Japanese, One Ni Chan would be said. All right. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh yeah, oh, that was that was I've... that was part of this thread. Oh, okay. Um, do you know what dialogue has been changed in the Kashimashi Discotech release? I know Cutie Honey has Monica Real voice. No, Seriously? I'm surprised he didn't. I'm so it's probably because she used to be in the other dub, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Oh. But um, so I'm, Kashimashi... I'm surprised you haven't brought that up, Luigi. That Discotech hires Monica Real. No. Yeah, discotech. Um, no more discotech. Really? For Kashi Mashi, they uh, they updated the pronouns of the guy who gets turned into a girl. Yeah, we have one viewer, and it's on Twitch apparently. YouTube uh, viewers, please represent if you're actually there, because I think this count is wrong. <laughs> Male nudity is fine, but now cleave, but no cleavage allowed. Anyway, it what is a turf? Oh, maybe we did. Oh, this thing's still here. It says you're live. Yeah. 
I did mention yeah. the chlorine gas. So. <laughs> Hold on, I have to sit through an ad. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> are, are you go? No, I'm on YouTube. If okay, cool. We are live. Huh? I don't know. the the, the uh, count says zero on YouTube, zero on Facebook, one on Twitch. All right. Well, I'm gonna clearly Streamyard is lying to us. Horton hits a whore. Yes. Uh, uh, for the last okay. <laughs> anyway all right so mothra wants to dominate your home's interior as a gigantically awesome tissue cover so you can pull your tissues out of his ass but that becomes like not practical <laughs> having it that big <laughs> The like, tissue box? You got that much room on your desk just for a tissue box? I mean, I think no, it just gives you the excuse you to keep your tissue box in your bed where you're fapping. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I, I, I think it's also probably got another hole in the back end that you can replace a tissue box with something else. Uh, I don't that, you know, I don't think so. And I hope nobody can... does what you're suggesting. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> anyway. If that doesn't tickle your pickle, you can also get an official whale lord flush. <laughs> okay, that's horrible. Fuck. That is no reason. Oh my god! No. Do not do that. <laughs> oh my god! This that is adorable. That whale lord wow. flush is adorable. What? You know what isn't adorable? A man who spent twenty three thousand dollars on a on a lifelike wolf costume to no longer feel human. <laughs> so, when I was a kid, like um, you know, in junior high age or whatever, I remember going to uh, to my um, aunt and uncle's house in Arizona, and my little cousins, when I went outside, were terrified. That the big bad wolf was going to come get me <laughs> because I was out after dark. I guess that was the lie that their parents told them mm -hmm. in order to keep their kids inside. And they scared the living daylights out of them. Uh, but if I saw this, <laughs> I'd become a believer. <laughs> I mean, it looks, a it looks like a fur desire to be a furry gone, you know, incredibly serious. Yeah. Oh, continue. Costumes. Now, Costumes allow us to shed who we are and transform into someone or something else. If only for a little while, even though it's temporary, the the feeling of freedom is worth it. Just ask Toru Ueda. Oh, no. An engineer in Tokyo. He spent $23,000 on an incredibly realistic costume wolf suit that covers him from head to toe. When he wears the costume, he no longer feels human and has a chance to escape our otherwise ordinary existence. Do you think that this is how they feel in Wolf's Reign? No. <laughs> Watch Club Win. <laughs> Dear God. I. Mm. E. Castro says that costume would be so weird to see in real life. Uh, yes, yeah. it is. It is weird to see on the internet, even. <laughs> also, it's disturbing to think how much, how deep. Now we have wolf two Twitch viewers, <laughs> still zero on YouTube and Facebook. Cool. <laughs> anyway, um, right. while it might be an unconventional way to express these very human feelings, Ueda's desire is relatable. "Quote: I'm free of human relationships, all kinds of troubles, all kinds of troubles related to work and other things." He says, "I can forget about them. <laughs> I'm one with my wolf self." He loses himself in his animal alter ego. I'm Ueda, I am free to go shit in the park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of troubles related to work and having to shit indoors. I'm free from them. Who <laughs> <laughs> waited tapped the Japanese company Zepet, um, Z Pet, Z Zier Pet, uh, to make his lifelike wolf costume. It specializes in creating sculptures and models for the entertainment industry, as well as mascots. It's not the first time we've seen this company's work. In 2022, it's realistic. It's equally as realistic. Dog costume went viral. Is this the one we covered? Probably. I'm pretty sure this is the one we covered. With the yellow dog. With the border call or the collie or whatever. The. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> oh, oh boy. 
I think they've upped their game on the wolf. Yeah. Add tab to group, old duck. Cool. All right. Back to this. Okay. Um, why is this hyperlink <laughs> separate? Um, the engineer wanted the suit to be as naturalistic as possible while still allowing him to walk around like a human. Well, that breaks the emergent. Yeah. Now you're just a goddamn werewolf. <laughs> now you're just a, <laughs> now you're just a, a creep. <laughs> Commit or GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> to make his dream a reality, the clients in the company <laughs> he, he's exchanged... He's got to go full Kena and fix himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did, because I don't see any balls on this floor. <laughs> <laughs> The engineer wanted the suit to be as naturalistic as possible while still allowing him to walk around like a human. To make his dream a reality, the client and the company exchanged 40 emails where they discussed details as minute as the texture of the coat. Wow, what a minute detail. The How is it going to feel everywhere? Oh, that's so minute. <laughs> if you said like the texture of the nose or something, okay, maybe you're getting a little bit more minute. How the asshole attaches to the zipper. Yeah, see, the, the, yeah, the important part is that I need to unzip it and climb in through the asshole. <laughs> Unlike the canine costume, which features an entire YouTube channel dedicated to it, Ueda demurs when wearing his wolf suit. What? Uh, he won't wear it out. Good, except for the part where you did. <laughs> and it's something he shares with friends over drinks in his home. That's definitely a green screen, dude. Definitely a green screen. After all, an escape is best when it's more of a treat and less a part of everyday life. Costumes allow us to shed who we are, transform someone else, even though for a while. Okay, even though it's temporary, the feeling of freedom is worth it. So you're just going to give me the exact article again, but with a bunch of fucking photos intermixed? Dude, where, where do you think the you real eye that holes face are in the mouth? You wake up and your significant other is wearing that, and you're just like, Well, that looks like a predator to me, <laughs> right? Everything about it <laughs> is like <laughs> this predator had to don the costume to let you know what he was. <laughs> wow, all the Lucario fangirls might Stunning be stunning and brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck is... that. <laughs> well, uh, poor and Greenland. It's, it's if you can believe it, Robert. we're already in misc news. Oh no, it'll be fine. Half foot in them as an editor, it'll be great. It won't come back <sighs> to bite me in the ass several times. No, uh, look, look, man, look, man. He could either do you like that, or he doesn't like he does. Do you like he does? Me, he never get back to me on anything. What I was saying to Greenline is that, oh, with the uh, this AI sampling technology, it's not as if I have perfectly isolated audio of Greenline that I could use to make like you can make them say anything. <laughs> uh, anything. Honestly, of, no. <laughs> Greenline, you could just feed all of your scripts into the into AI, the AI. <laughs> and get a perfect delivery every time. No editing required. Yeah, no more editing required. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Job now. <laughs> well, I still need you to video edit. So AI can... AI has replaced Footnum's job. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that so, meme that uh, who who put it? It's Reese. Like, when I found when I found out that AI can replace my job, when I found out that AI could replace my job. <laughs> yeah. No, it's when I found out AI could do my job for me. When I found out AI oh, right, could do right, my right, job. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Giant metal orb appears on the beach in Japan. Anime fans say it's probably Dragon Ball aliens. <laughs> oh. One guess as to what it is. Ooh, pick me, pick me. I know, I know. A buoy, well, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a mine. The it's a buoy. Video, this video reminds me of the opening of the toy animation films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's that very beach? It's the same beach. The beach of Japan. <laughs> 
So you got the pool, the beach, a pool. What? Anyway, so yeah, people are pointing out it's right about the right size, too. Now, in other news, a takoyaki stand in Nagoya sold side orders of cocaine, the police Damn. say. Wow. System required That's buyers to use a code word stuff, when placing yeah. takeout orders, say investigators. Stand selling takoyaki spice. usually don't offer a whole lot else. The spherical octopus dumplings require a special inverse dome indented flat grill contraption to cook. And they're usually eaten by stabbing them with a toothpick. Putting additional side items on the menu would require buying a bunch of other types of equipment with utensils. Pardon. Buying other types of equipment and utensils, an investment most takoyaki merchants don't think is worth it. However, according to the Nagoya police, a certain takoyaki stand in the city did offer something other than octopus balls. It wasn't listed on the menu, but if you knew how to ask for it, you could get your takoyaki with a side of cocaine. Investigators say that Masamichi Shimazu, the 29-year-old owner of a takoyaki stand in Nagoya Sakai neighborhood, had a system by which customers could purchase the drug by speaking a code word when placing their takoyaki order. What do you think the code word was? Coke. Can, can I get that with some Pepsi? <laughs> I asked for Pepsi, damn it. <laughs> What's this white shit? The cocaine wasn't mixed into the batter, but was placed in a Ziploc-style bag, which was then slipped Ziploc into style a larger bag. bag along with the takeout takoyaki. So the system apparently required that anyone who wanted cocaine also order food. That's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> Come for the coke, stay for the takoyaki. <laughs> no, takoyaki is amazing. I On February 15th. I always have it when I go to Anime North. Mm, Shimizu mm. and his 31-year-old <laughs> right. employee, Takao Suz Suzaki, were found to be in possession of 0 0.7 grams of cocaine which investigators believe they intended to sell. And the pair were arrested on suspicion of violating the narcotics control law. Subsequent digging uncovered payments from the takoyaki stand to a management group in Mie Prefecture running unlicensed hostess bars, ostensibly funneling the drug profits to them. Four members of that group, likely to have Yakuza ties, have now been arrested as well, bringing the total number of arrests up to six. Coincidentally, the same number of dumplings in a standard takoyaki order. Okay. <laughs> what was the, the, word, the, the code word? Not. Now I don't know how to get it. <laughs> it, probably, it probably wasn't Pepsi. It was probably Diet Pepsi. I mean, if you just want to keep making this more and more What if cringe, the code word I mean... was just give me some cocaine, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like some takoyaki on it, though. With Can you go heavy sugar. on the MSG? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Put some they powdered sugar. They would have said it all in English. English. I want to feel good while I'm eating these. <laughs> Osaka man arrested after paying phone bill in the middle of his crime spree. <laughs> crime doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a well-known fact that convenience stores are just about everywhere in urban parts of Japan. And with the wide range of services they offer, you're never too far away from a copy machine or fried chicken. As a tribute to however, as a tribute to however present they are, uh, I once ran a five-family mark course in two minutes flat. Wow. All right. Oh, you filmed it. Great. Visiting five <laughs> family marts in two minutes. <laughs> okay. What did you just jump in the door and out? Yeah, probably. Unfortunately, in two minutes, that's how close they are. Damn, five yeah, in two minutes. Them. That's crazy. That is pretty crazy. Do they just go in there? They step on the they step on the pad at the door that opens the automatic doors and then bolt. Unfortunately, this convenience also carries over to crime, allowing a robber to potentially hit several stores in a single sweep of an area if they were daring enough. Speaking of which, on the 11th of January, a 20-year-old man in Osaka City was arrested for attempting to rob four convenience stores in a span of about 20 minutes. According to police, the first store was hit sometime after 3 a.m., at which time he allegedly threatened the clerk with a 20-centimeter 
or eight inch kitchen knife and demanded they hand over their money. Having escaped with 454 US dollars in cash, he then attempted to hit three other stores in under half an hour. It is unclear if any of those other robberies were successful, but none of the victims were harmed. If that wasn't already a speedy enough crime spree, the suspect is also said to have stopped at another convenience store between his third and fourth robbery attempts. Rather than threatening this clerk, the suspect instead asked to pay his phone bill using the money he had stolen minutes earlier. It was that one brief moment of responsibility that proved to be his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> After the first robbery, police used surveillance camera footage to track his movements between the stores, which were all within 500 meters, uh, uh, within a 500 meter radius of each other. They could then use the transaction record of his phone bill payment to easily identify him. The suspect admitted to, to the crimes, saying that he committed them because he was having money problems. Despite the suspect's hardships, Readers of the news took little pity on them. Quote, it would have been funny if he tried to pay at the store he robbed. <laughs> <laughs> After three, he must have been feeling invincible. <laughs> That's so stupid and it's impressive. <laughs> I wonder if he had a smartphone addiction. Mm, gotcha games probably. <laughs> With four robberies, he's looking at some hard time. It's like he felt the risk of not having a phone was worse than committing the robbery. <laughs> it's like real life Grand Theft Auto. Perhaps video games were responsible, not so much for the crime, but for the mentality that it only takes a few minutes for the stars at the top of the screen to fade. <laughs> what an <laughs> Yeah, the wanted level, just you got to wait it out. <laughs> So that, Where you're so going, the, you won't need your phone. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, then we owe video games a debt of gratitude for helping make people less adept at committing crimes. Okay. <laughs> well, then, blame, that didn't go... Blame, blame games for stupid criminals. That didn't go where I wanted that article to go, but whatever. All right, so double eyelid surgery ads are rampantly targeting teens in Japan. What? So um, if you don't know this, uh, the Japanese have, or most Asians, have what they call double eyelids. So in, um, I'm, I'm guessing, it's, is it the lower? It's got to be the lower lid, right? Uh, no, I think it's the uh, top. Is it the upper? The upper I lid. don't even know. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. The upper, li I don't fucking know. Anyway, it's, they don't have some, before now. You know it when have... you see somebody who has them removed or whatever, because their eyes look more no, almond shaped or whatever the no, word no, no. is no so so i'll pull up an some image. asian people have what like no eyelid thing it's all like one piece right <laughs> and then oh, okay i see some Here people the have real. the double lid which is just like a line essentially above the eyelid line and it's more common in western people so a, uh, some Asian people uh, find that more attractive. So then now they're getting surgeries to make the second line so that they have a second eyelid. They're getting line. eyelid implants, basically. Uh, so basically, they yeah. don't have the crease. Yeah. So the, Is the that solution... why people uh, think that Asians uh, don't age or whatever? Because this is offensive. This is white face. <laughs> <laughs> it's cultural appropriation. Hmm. Yes. Well, don't appropriate my eyelids. You looked fine before. Well, we're gonna have to wear some yukatas when we go to Japan, aren't we, boys? No. <laughs> I'm gonna wear the fundoshi. <laughs> The airport. That's any true American would. <laughs> that, that's dragging that's got the thing go down to his ankles. Yeah, when the OCA podcast makes enough money that we have our trip to Japan, I can't wait to go to the co ed bath <laughs> so we can all try out our pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to I'm get sure, thrown out I'm of the country. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to read the article about six idiots who got thrown out of Japan. <laughs> 
for trying that'll, to pick up chicks. That'll be the game. Erections. How long can you stay until you get kicked out? <laughs> How long can you stay flaccid in the co <laughs> Well, considering these are all old grandmas and young boys, <laughs> according to Footnote. Oh, dear. <laughs> You see, there are many times in my life I've, I'm glad that I can't see what's going on in Footnote's head. And that moment, that is one of the top picks. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out the way the way you the phrased old, that. The old, you said, he, I can't see what's going on in Footnote's head. I'm like, little can boys other in a Japanese co ed hot spring. And I'm just thinking to myself, of all the times I'm, I'm terrified of what's going on in his head, that moment, I'm glad I can't see it. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of the anime where the they're like, Oh no! Okay. <laughs> what? It, when they're when they're in the hot well, spring yeah. or whatever, and they're just like, oh no! It's I don't like, know. Like, <laughs> I feel like there's a big no. chunk of that, that story. Missing. That's my reaction to this whole thought. Oh uh, no 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 no! It's not graphic, you morons. It's like the chibi, uh, no, no, whatever. No, no. Like, oh no, it's only old Dude, ladies and naked the, girl, whatever. man. I just okay. don't. So anyway, back to double eyelid surgery. <laughs> so cosmetic surgery for kids isn't anything new in Japan, but there has been an apparent increase in advertisements. And now they're being seen in trains and other public areas and are aggressively targeting insecure teens in hopes of getting their business. A concerned Twitter user shared one of the advertisements found on a train for double eyelid surgery aimed towards girls 19 years and younger for the flattering cost of only 39,000 yen. Quote, I used to not like sports because the sweat would remove my double eyelid glue. No what? more being afraid of sweat and water. There's only three years of high school life. I want to spend every second of it as my cute self. <laughs> Once again, uh, apparently you're ugly if you uh, hashtag uh, you have to appropriate white culture. <laughs> Is this the real reason that guys, uh, you know, don't get laid is because they're actually really picky? They're like, oh, my God, those are those no, are the fake, real reason guys don't get laid lids. is the girls are terrified that the the sweat is going to cause their double eyelid glue to come off in bed. Ah. They don't want no, that don't bad. come on my face. My double eyelid glue. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 the guys won't will be so turned off by the fake lids that they won't even approach them that's why they're so content with fake 2d girls is this why mike Haimoto was so rude to to avery uh smithheart you said, shooting my eye, you fucking jackass. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, sorry. <laughs> so you said like, this happened. article is targeted. Oh, yeah. Literally, they they their aim is 19 and under for these. And under, yeah. And there's I just thought I, there's only three I'm, I'm years amazed of high school. No I, I article... want to spend every second of it as my cute yeah, self. I'm amazed. Because I'm of amazed. the natural born beauty I was was just so hideous with those fucking eyes. How dare you not have eyelids? You know, like uh, <laughs> I'm honestly like amazed that no one in this article has the balls to mention, oh yeah, they're targeting children for, for some kind of like corrective surgery for no fucking reason. Uh, I mean, they, the literal first words of the article are cosmetic surgery for kids isn't anything new in Japan. <laughs> yeah, but there's no connotation. There's not enough negative connotation there, in my opinion. But I mean, condemnation. Just... Thank you. Uh, what people find more it's troubling good. from these ads is that they give a positive outlook to the pressure to access the social capital of cuteness through <laughs> highly irreversible plastic surgery methods. This isn't a female exclusive problem as men see something similar in terms of lookism and power relations. Isn't this the same with like Snaggletooth? Does she even have the fucking double eyelids? Like, I don't. They're probably saying, look at this ugly bitch. Could you imagine the guy opposite here? Did you imagine, here? <laughs> could you imagine the guy opposite here where it's like, I want to look awesome. So he shaves his eyes. So they shave his eyes and shit and look like Super Saiyan. Well, I, yes. see them. I don't know what it is, but you do like the, 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 the snooty girl voice. So well. <laughs> Thank I need you, him in my mark. anime dubs. <laughs> Another Twitter user pointed out that double eyelid surgery ads weren't even the worst with 
hair removal treatment ads aimed towards elementary and middle school girls. It's bikini season, girls. You know what that means? Get that Whoa. uncomfortable channel. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to wear their sukumizu in it, the public, uh, uh, the school pool, and having their unkempt bush poking out. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but I have, I, I have to play. Look, not everyone can be as kawaii abaka as you. Okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Joe Rogan uh, arrested for uh, coaxing elementary school age girls. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've been I've been uh, holding off on this one for over a month here. So let's finally cover it. Wi-Fi routers help scientists see people through walls. Uh, cue Batman clip. <laughs> so I would just like to point out um, something that's just. So I remember how I uh, in the history of the channel. Uh, I once tried to make a review of Vexil <laughs> that got so derailed that I could not render it on my computer because there was not enough space. <laughs> um, in that process, one of the things I talked about in that review was the concept of um, predictive programming through media. And I couldn't help but notice the fact that right before um, Edward Snowden came out and told everybody that uh, that the government was spying on you. Uh, Christopher Nolan made a Batman film in which Batman harnessed the power of all of the cell phones in order to create an X-ray vision so he could see through walls and spy on people. Kind so, of when he was trying to look for the Joker. Yeah. So a team of researchers at Pittsburgh Carnegie Mellon University in the U.S. have devised a system capable of seeing the shapes and movements of humans in a room using only Wi-Fi routers. The scientists published a, a preprint paper on their findings on RZIV last month. By the way, Reese, completely unrelated to this, SXSW, for future reference, is South by Southwest. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice uh, last podcast that you read out the acronym. <laughs> um, it explained how they developed a deep neural network that could map the phase and amplitude of Wi-Fi signals sent and received by rou routers to create UV mapped coordinates of 24 human regions. So U and V are um, on a 2D image. They're the, uh, the vertical and horizontal axis. Um, UV mapping is a technique for modeling 3D objects onto two-dimensional coordinate systems. That's why they call uh, the 3D objects get unwrapped for texture mapping. They call those UV maps. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so after I chastise uh, Reese, e Castro comes in and is like, by the way, R Xive is pronounced archive. <laughs> All right, cool. I, I equally have egg on my face. <laughs> by, by the way, thanks is pronounced thanks, not thanks. <laughs> uh, I pronounce it however. Thanks for that explanation. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. All right. <laughs> I may um, see. I'm going to the store later. UV mapping is a technique for modeling 3D objects on a two dimensional coordinate system. The results of the study reveal that our model can estimate the dense pose of multiple objects with comparable performance to image-based approaches by utilizing Wi-Fi signals as the only input, the researchers said. Uh, the software used to map the pixels on the human body was dense post, co-developed by researchers from London and Facebook's AI division. What? You don't say. <laughs> It's almost as though Facebook has been an arm of the government, specifically DARPA, this whole time. The research paper explained that three components were used to produce the coordinates from Wi-Fi signals. First, the raw channel state information signals were cleaned by amplitude and phase san sanitization. Oh, that's, yes, that is a word. Uh, then a two-branch encoder-decoder network performs domain translation 
from sanitized CSI samples to 2D feature maps that resemble images. Wow. I wonder if you could use uh, Wi-Fi to motion cap, <laughs> motion capture things. Um, it's like, hold on. I need to pull out my mobile hotspot so I can uh, motion cap on, on location. <laughs> you know. um, oh, by the way, uh, after last podcast, I don't know if this got brought up on stream because I wasn't there for it. But uh, I checked my phone's uh, data usage, and I was at 1.1 terabytes. So uh, please go ahead and fund the OCA podcast, because my bill next month is going to be fucking high. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And it's not even April yet. (laughs) No. (laughs) Well, it's going to turn into April with that bill. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, so... uh, so to, finally, you know, I'm just going to wrap this up. Uh, this is all a bunch of no word salad. So I'm just going to the... listening to you in fast the... forward is great. Yeah. So I'm done. Uh, uh, 20, 2023 going to be lit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can't wait till they use Wi-Fi to target uh, people with uh, those drones that uh, detach the missiles in midair and in- independently target when they send the dogs to your house, you know, they'll, uh, yeah. they'll know which winter to pop into and shoot you because you know, Hey, uh, why not it dude, like comment on this. Yeah, yeah. I want to make just drop they're, a rock. No they're going to send dogs. They're going to send cocks with knives. Yeah. What, dude, <laughs> what the, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the thing is, is that it it's, it shows throughout our history that most innovation comes about, through some desire for military or, you know, violence in some yes. capacity. The military or, is about or, 10 years ahead of the civilian population in any technology. Uh, that's and they how the create, microwave was invented. What? The microwave? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they, yes. Enough said. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't need to, I don't need to go on a grandiose uh, explanation of why this is uh, dystopian. Let's keep going. All right, so Lance, I'm sorry, but uh, this article m- left much to be desired. <laughs> Groom caught being breastfed by his mother. No. Okay, yeah, caught being breastfed by his mother, by his bride on wedding day. Okay, yeah, that was weird. Um, unfortunately, it's literally a story from a TikTok, and the girl's uh, proof was, nah, it happened. Trust me, bro. <laughs> So uh, probably a lie. Uh, I spent a good um, 20 hours trying to get stable diffusion to draw this horrifying (laughs) scene. And I just just go to Pornhub and type it. Sadly, stable diffusion left a lot to be desired. Hey, I got pretty close. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love what Uh, you guys do with your time, by the way. Yeah, I don't, you don't want to see the try to get the of some dude. Trust me, you do not want to see like the I bride mean, and groom <laughs> deep throating a double ended cock. Like, how did you get that? <laughs> Stable diffusion had a right? very interesting you interpretation. Your cookies and cash on your phone. It's like, mm-hmm, me like this does he? <laughs> so e-, e Cashner says, "Damn, I was hoping I was hoping it's a real article too, but it, they they did a terrible job." Uh, like they could have at least had an artist rendering or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the courtroom <laughs> sketch. Brad, you're just saying hire me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so a Japanese man punched and robbed. Sorry, a Japanese man was punched and robbed for taking too long on a convenience store toilet. Isn't this another one I posted? What was the hold on? What was the what was the picture of power in there? Um, I don't think YouTube wants me to linger on that picture. <laughs> oh man. Uh it's in the doc, OCA podcast.com uh slash OCA dash two one five. Uh glad to see you're here, the cool two T. Sorry that uh we didn't give you enough advance warning. Um I Watch highly uh, yeah, I encourage you to go check out the movie poster I stayed up till four in the morning making. <laughs> I'm glad you got here. A, during, uh, you know, a some a somewhat appalling incident has occurred in Japan, where a man in Japan's Chiba prefecture was apprehended for attacking another man and stealing their wallet, all because the victim took too long on a convenience store toilet. 
The attacker identified as a 21 year old scaffold constructor constructor constructor. Yes. Uh, was waiting for his turn to use the men's toilet at a convenience store just past midnight on February 18th. But as the victim, a salary man took longer and longer to finish his business. The scaffold constructor began to get unreasonably angry. It was beating off, man. Come on. <laughs> As the salary man left the toilet, well, to be real, like the salary man was probably hammered because they, they get still drunk. asleep on the can. <laughs> yeah, they get drunk quite a bit. So it's very likely. I'm pretty sure yes. that is their job is just to get drunk at work. Just to get drunk with the boss. Yeah. As the salary man left the toilet, the scaffold constructor dragged him out of the store and began to punch and kick the man in the face until he lost consciousness. Imagine beating the shit out of somebody who just, just took a, took a shit, shit while you have to take a shit. That sounds awful. Could you imagine like, like you're brave, you like, you kick them and all this. Like, dude, dude, oh, yeah, look, dude, if the the guy would have fucked back and you, you, you had shit. one good punch to the gut. <laughs> I don't mind dude, that line you from you hey, fighting going back to the <laughs> that line the in Dragon Ball. That, <laughs> that line in Dragon Ball when they're doing the world martial arts tournament and Goku gets done eating, he says, Oh, I'm stuffed. Whoever fights whatever me in the first round, the whatever you do, don't punch me in the gut. And Vegeta's like, Vegeta's If like, I fight yeah. Kakarot in the first mm -hmm. round, the first thing I'm going to do is punch him in the gut. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So uh -oh. afterwards, the attacker stole uh, 110,000 yen from the man's wallet, kicked the man's head, and then left the scene of the crime. Eyewitnesses reported the event to police, after which they investigated security footage to apprehend the suspect. The attack salary man was left with, with, with damage to the face and lips that may not fully recover. Oh, no. Ooh. When interrogated, the scaffold constructor said that his intention wasn't to attack the man just to steal his money. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess there's no mistake. <laughs> I guess he there didn't need no to mistake. shit after all. <laughs> the cool 2T says this is the only toilet in Japan. It's the Highlander of toilets. So I got to know, did he take a dump, though? Like, did he, did he like, <laughs> he was probably he like waiting. you wait right here. I have to fire out this shit and I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> Brad, just uh, Google the article name on Brave Search. You'll find out. Oh, I really don't need to do that. No. <laughs> I have been scarred for this podcast too much already. <laughs> Fukushima, but, but in what the theme, <laughs> Fukushima man defecates on woman's bicycle seat. Quote, I was attracted to her. This guy uses oh, dude, Brave didn't Search. didn't make a transition to this article. <laughs> Japan's wow. tendency to have citizens who commit strange crimes resumes <laughs> as one man in Fukushima was arrested after defecating on a woman's bicycle, which he allegedly did because he found the female rider to be attractive and likely dashing his chances with her in the process. Well, he was just marking his territory, okay? Like... <laughs> he, he was he was giving her an appetizer for what he, what, what he asked her to toss his salad a little bit later. Man, oh, imagine no. what the full Dear course would have been like. Taking place on December 15th of last year, a female teenager returned to her bicycle that she left outside a station in Fukushima's Soma City, only to find human feces was positioned atop her seat, prompting her to contact the authorities. Police carried out an investigation and determined the poopetrator... <laughs> <laughs> to be a 28-year-old man who lives in Miyagi Prefecture... And he was immediately arrested on suspicion of vandalism after being accused of evacuating the contents of his anal cavity on the bike while the victim was away from it. Crazy. Did he actually take the shit like over the seat or something? Reese, I will tell you this much here. Master Miyagi while, is not proud. While more intricate details on the crime weren't provided, police are apparently certain that the human excrement was definitely released naturally onto the bike seat. As opposed wow. to being placed or smeared. <laughs> okay. Honestly, honestly, like if someone took a perfect shit on like my, right like, on my like, bike, it wasn't like man. explosive diarrhea. Or yeah, something. and it and it was just a shit, and it wasn't like smeared everywhere. And it stayed and on just, there even though it was slightly tilted from the kickstand and everything. No, and I could just tilt my bike over, and it would fall off. <laughs> 
I would probably not call the cops over that. I would just <laughs> well, wipe it off first, guys. and deal with it. Controversial because opinion right there. I hope right you there. never get no. doxxed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! If it happens, if it, if it ever happened more than once, then we're. Then we're completely <laughs> but are you gonna deal with? Like, are you gonna call the cops and have them come over? Like, how much time are you gonna waste for someone shitting on your bike? All right, the serial defecator. Okay, first off, first off, I cannot. the The situation here is that this was a what middle school girl. High school girl, teenage girl, says. okay. Yeah. Well, okay, I don't know what to say there, but no, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that it was a high school girl, and also some creepo is just like, out of my love, I'm going to shit on your bike. No, I'd call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have no, I have no love loss for this. E Castro <laughs> says, Imagine being the cop called to this case, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Someone took shit on my bike, <laughs> dude. DNA, well, what's test your emergency right now? How do we know it wasn't you? You could be staging this. <laughs> the suspect was caught admitting he was attracted to the to the bike's female owner and explained he purposely chose her vehicle as his makeshift toilet. I just... I don't this need to see it, age. but I like the idea that there is... I just picture you did it like a... There is like page. security oh. camera footage where this guy is like... He's got his pants all the way off because you can't straddle a bike while you're <laughs> while your pants are pulled down so his pants are all the way off neatly folded underwear too right next to the bike or or some like in the basket of the bike or whatever and he is like straddling this bike with one leg on the wall the other leg is standing on like the pedal and he is just you know, channeling all of his strength to not only hold himself up, but also to stay directly above the seat as he squeezes God, out. How, how tall is this guy? That's what I was thinking. I don't know. But, I was having. I was but it is a teenage like a girl, so it could bike. be a smaller bike. Yeah, I was thinking of being a smaller bike. Now, keep in mind, of course, he's got to be furiously masturbating in the midst of all of this. No. <laughs> Yes. No. He admitted that he was attracted to the bike's female owner. This was yeah, a dominance he... play. <laughs> no, he, he does that but, later. But they left out and went and that she didn't notice. He came on the handlebars. There's no way he has enough time. <laughs> what I what I turns could, out well, turns I mean, out he did way worse stuff to the rest of the bike. The poop was a distraction. <laughs> Well, okay. Oh no, what bird I... shit all over my handlebars. <laughs> oh, God. This is the worst day ever. <laughs> what I want to imagine, what I want to figure out is like he apparently if if the whole I liked her thing is actually a thing, you know, here's and this wasn't just some random act of insanity, which it possibly is. Uh let's just imagine that okay, he had to have seen her get off the bike. How long was this bike there? Because like she might have just walked away and it doesn't take very it. long to take a shit. He was lunch. watching from the bush. He was prairie dogging it. And it's the second <laughs> she locked up the bike and ran away. He's like, oh, "What does she no chance?" He you know? <laughs> <in my> chance. <laughs> my theory is that this guy must have been a voice actor, preferably from what? Genshin, that is needs to that they're trying to frame. <laughs> To get him canceled. Imagine if Vic Mignano was framed for this. He took a dump on my bike. I'm sorry. It, it, the, the way that would the be the best article spoken. ever. Just saying, it would be the funniest damn thing. I mean, drop you. I mean, the Samantha Inoue Hart stuff we covered was was almost there. He found the he girl took a dump on my board. It was, it, was on my it, was, it was probably on page 49 of that 50 page doc. <laughs> so Luigi in the Middle 64 says, I have seen anime girls pulling down their panties so that one leg is holding the panties. So uh touche. I, I guess he didn't have to take <laughs> his pants all the way off. He could have taken his panties partially off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got it. But I as I said, <laughs> I like the mental image. The I think it's funnier on. to think that he that he put he's his pants and underwear in he, the basket of the no, bike. No, oh my god, Reese is right. He's wearing a wearing his skirt. <laughs> Reese, you're a genius. Singapore is known for the cane whackings. That made people scared into not doing crimes. Huh. What? You know what also scares people into not doing crimes? Um, Corporal punishment. <laughs> uh, 
uh, uh, shooting on sight, uh, guillotines, you know, <laughs> punishment of any kind. Uh, anyway, that's the last article I had planned. It is currently only three hours and 48 minutes. That is a new record for a while. Uh, if you guys would like to go thing. through a couple of these uh, AC's Funhouse, fun do you want to go through the mermaid one? Sure. Ah, murder. Let's Movies. do these last two here. I'm going to actually get to bed on time tonight. This is fucking lit. <laughs> He, he said with his Zoomer language. Immediately eat words <laughs> in three hours. So I, I'm sure you guys have seen this before. The the supposed mermaid that was found in Japan that is clearly a monkey oh, shoved monkey in a fish. Shoved. Like I mean it's clear as day, right? <laughs> mermaid mummy stored at Japanese temple has true identity revealed after a year long study. I just like the idea that there's like a, a discovery channel, like, you know, five part, you know, series about this and everybody knows the answer. It's like, it's like the, there's a rule. If an article, if the article is, if the title of an article is a question, the answer is always no. Right. Like, <laughs> Do bees have gay sex? No, <laughs> right? Like it's just if the if the title of the article is all is a question, the answer is no, and it's going to be like, could it be a real mermaid? No, it's exactly what you thought it was when you started and sat down for this five hour mini doc and on this saw the first thing. glimpse of it, and it was like it's just a fucking monkey shoved in a fish. <laughs> So you're a telling fish? me that the ancient alien show is all a lie? Do they ask you, questions? Yeah. Th then you yes. Ever, have you ever watched <laughs> the show? They couch everything in. Could it be that an ancient be? alien race once visited the Earth? <laughs> no. Because it's on the, the History Channel, so they don't want to say anything that's wrong. Don't you so love that the History Channel is nothing but Nibiru <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> theories? <laughs> So the Japanese word for doll and mermaid is ningyo. So ningyo was said to have been pulled out of the sea by a fisherman in Tosa domain in nearly 300 years ago. Much like how the dragons of Japanese lore differ from their European counterparts, Japanese mermaids look very different from what you'd see in a Hans Christian Andersen storybook or a Disney movie. Japan's ningyo which translates literally as people fish. Oh, Gyo Tokyo fish attack makes sense now. It just means fish. <laughs> um, are often depicted not with the upper body of a supermodel, but a more compact, almost simian form. If you're having trouble forming a mental image, perhaps this video will help and or give you nightmares. <laughs> I just want to say the comments about big fishes can eat animals. They have teeth. And then cool 2 t says, so a fish tried to eat the monkey then and, and choked. That no. is possible. I just want I, to say that it's... none of that refutes the fact that AC is playing forward. That's a fish has a monkey shoved in it. <laughs> it's not <Yeah>. a mermaid. <laughs> it's very clearly not the fish's mouth. It's like a fish cut in half. Right. And like, I, it just looks so fucking funny. So shown in the video is one of the treasures stored at in Enjuin Temple in the town of Asakuchi, Okayama Prefecture. According to a handwritten note inside the Polonia box in which it's been stored, it's the mummified body of a ningyo that was caught in a fisherman's net in the waters off Tosa, present day Kochi, Kochi Prefecture. Uh, during the Genbun era of Japanese history, which lasted from 1736 to 1741. So it predates America's Declaration of Independence. Uh, however, no one is exactly sure <laughs> how the temple came to be in possession of the mermaid mummy, which doesn't exactly help the tale's plausibility. In February of last year, a five-person team of researchers from Kurashiki University of Science and the Arts, also in Okayama, began an investigation to determine the true identity of the artifact through X-rays, CT scans, DNA analysis, and radiocarbon dating. 
So one thing that I'm very disappointed um, from this article is that they don't show you the x-rays because I just want to see the monkey's legs, you know, and like <laughs> spine, like the, the spine either just ends right here, right? And then the fish spine isn't connected to it in any way or what at all. Or like the legs are just kind of mangled and, and like shoved all the way down into the tail. <laughs> yeah. This week, the team announced its results, and unfortunately for cryptid fans, no, it turns out it's not actually a mermaid. What? No! Five hours into this documentary, <laughs> the Kusa team knew something was up when the only genuine skeletal structure component they could confirm was a jawbone <laughs> as the 30 centimeter or 11.8 inch Ningyo lacked a skull spine or ribs the fuck is that then there's a jawbone in there but nothing else i mean those fingers do look like sausages like, <laughs> it just looks like a spaghetti of sculpture that picture uh. instead the investigation found that the artifact was crafted from a plaster or gypsum like substance from which features including its arms, hands, and eye sockets were formed. The upper body, which also had portions made of cloth, was wrapped in a thin sheet of paper, which was then wrapped in fugu, blowfish skin. Oh. And the head was stuffed with cotton with some sort of intermediate animal with some sort of intermediate intermittent, sorry, some sort of intermittent animal hair. Attached to the top of the head to give it a mammalian uh, appearance. Uh, I swear the to God, scales and fins food, on the I... lower body, meanwhile, appear to be from a species of croaker fish. Well, it definitely croaked on, on this monkey it's eaten. <laughs> um, even, even the part about the artifact being found in a fisherman's net circa 1740 appears to be a hoax. As the researchers, after examining some scales that fell off of the lower body portion, calculated that the Ningyo carcass was most likely from the latter half of the 1800s. Oh, no. You're However, the temple isn't upset. aren't real? What? <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny about this is that the fucking History Channel literally does have an entire expose on mermaid sightings and shit. My, my father anything with parents. watched that <laughs> shit, believing every fucking word of it, seeing the CG renditions of the mermaids it, that it looked like found footage and going that like, wasn't, oh, it, oh. <laughs> that wasn't History Channel. That was Discovery Channel. Okay, whatever. They're the same. <laughs> they, they aired. No, because I saw the same thing that you're talking about. That stupid documentary. Wait. And it just like they had that one shot where like the camera like catches something right as it like looks at the camera and then jumps into the water and they showed oh. that thing a billion fucking times. Yeah. So this is on Discovery Channel. It was like I don't know seven years ago now, um, and it was on the guide. It's like you know oh we found you know first sightings of the fucking mermaid or whatever right. And I'm like what is this? And so I'm watching it. And then sure enough, the first commercial break, it's like. This is fake, basically. You know, every between every commercial break, they have the, like a disclaimer that comes up. Yeah. And like, you're about to watch a fake documentary, essentially. And I'm like, Everything what the you're watching is made up. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Discovery? You're, you're the Discovery Channel. <laughs> like, god damn it. Their audience wants to be lied to, so. I, I do have a question. Yeah. Are you really Randy Eleven? Because you said saw and not seen. <gasps> <gasps> Shit! It's is venom. There an AI de developing your voice. With I knew it. Grammar? I knew it. I called it from the Discord. Look at the venom, everyone. The um, also, I like. I like the idea. I, I like the head cannon I have of, the, of this. That this is just some 18th or 19th century otaku's figure <laughs> that fell in the ocean. <laughs> oh, the homemade figure. <laughs> Are you so gonna make the... a a mermaid mummy cum jar now? No. Mm. I'm gonna boot He's... you from this call. <laughs> <laughs> Filled with poo -poo. That was a question that had a definite no answer. 
<laughs> However, the temple isn't upset about having been duped. Speaking after the researchers announced their results, Enjuin Abbot Hiroyoshi Kuida said, quote, I think because of the tale, many people have come to see the Ningyo when it is on display and prayed while they are here. And I think they'll continue to do so. They probably wow. They never have to come back. Can't they just did these a little placard that says, "Warning: Not a real ningyo." <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> warning: If you warning, see prayers pro- may not come true as the as the being you're praying to is a jawbone with with clay and plaster around it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's probably like been come down at least once. <laughs> I'm surprised like you're dropping that word uh, in Chojin month of all months. Come? Or Ningyo. <laughs> Ningyo? Uh, Chojingyo? Didn't you say you're like 197,000th black or something? I don't know, dude. I'm 1%. One per, one yeah. That's why he's so appalled by our phrase. I only have, I can only say. Mm. <laughs> that, that's that's it. The first, the first half of the syllable. Uh, I think even. okay. So they they added, knowing that it was made from living things, we will continue to take good care of it and keep it safe. What living thing? A croaker fish that they shoved it in like a freaking sleeve and a jawbone <laughs> that may have come from a human. Who knows? Okay, okay. No, a conspiracy theory. Here's what happened: some dude <laughs> caught this fish. His kid's pet monkey died. But to save this whole situation, he shoves the monkey in the fish and says, look, it evolved into a mermaid, but it died right before I got it here. Well, uh, I'm sure that would uh, assuage the the kids uh, crying over their dead monkey. (laughs) Oh, it died as a mermaid instead. More more likely what happened is the kids chased their pet monkey in it jumped to try to get away. It jumped no, up onto no, the no. father's boat, uh, but he had puffer fish that he had caught because they they eat that shit there. And the puffer fish skewered the monkey, and the monkey was like, Ugh! he died in that pose because he seized up, and he was like, well, a normal man would see this as a tragedy, but I see a business opportunity. I see it as art. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> worth pointing out that Ningyo aren't prescribed any special religious significance in Japanese Buddhism, so the revelation that Enjuin isn't real is unlikely to trigger any crisis in faith or drop in visitors to the temple. Wow. It's almost like it's just there as an oddity. <laughs> uh, all right, so there was this article as well. I think tonight is a good night to cover it. Quote, I'm the most famous thug, thug in Saitama. Japanese kids' social media beef leads to beating and arrests. <laughs> Never get into pointless arguments on the internet, especially if the other kid is friends with a Yakuza member. <laughs> so social media can be a great way for connecting with people in your community that you share values and interests with. For example, back in the fall, two junior high school kids in Saitama who became acquainted through social media learned that they both thought of themselves as the most famous thug in the prefecture. It was a 14-year-old boy who got the ball rolling, posting, quote, I'm the most famous Yankee in Saitama using the Japanese slang term for juvenile delinquents. Wow, that's what they think of the Yanks, huh? (laughs) A 15-year-old junior high school girl then replied with, I'm a more famous Yankee than you are. Two likes, right? Is that actually what they use as a as a term, <laughs> Yankee? Yankee. That's that's what Cause, that's cause, their slang for. Because that's uh, what they use in uh, the in uh, fruits basket. So that wasn't a weird localization. Okay. <laughs> However, Japan is yet to institute an official ranking system for delinquent fame, even at the <laughs> national level, much less prefectural standings. The two self-proclaimed famous delinquents decided to settle their matter by meeting up in person, with each of them bringing a group of supporters with them. It's unclear what exactly transpired at the meeting, but apparently the girl and her group were outnumbered. Rather than accept this as a sign of inferior level of Yankee renown, though, on a later date, the girl reached out to another acquaintance of hers, a 25-year-old man who's a member of the Sumiyoshi Kai Yakuza. I just like the idea that this 25 year old gangster owes a favor to some 15 year old who is, who is having social media beef over who's more famous. 
The organized crime syndicate member mobilized the crew, estimated at 28 people strong and requiring six cars. In the pre-dawn hours of October 2nd, the group then abducted the 14-year-old boy from his home. (laughs) In the town of Kawaguchi and dropped him into a car. Over the next four hours, the boy was driven to three locations, including a riverside and a parking lot, where he was punched, kicked, and beaten with a metal pipe, suffering (laughs) broken ribs, a broken nose, and other injuries, which doctors say will take three months to heal. It is so fucking tragic and it's so (laughs) Just imagine, you post on Facebook, I'm the most famous thug in Saitama, Three months later, you're in a hospital bandaged from head to toe with a broken nose and broken <laughs> jaw and broken ribs because and some 15 year old girl on the internet couldn't take the idea that somebody else thought they were more famous than her. And like the perpetrator just puts X, like it replies just X. <laughs> X to <down. laughs> It's like uh, they reply with photos of him beaten up and the Yakuza standing around him is like, who's more famous now, bitch? <laughs> You're going to be the most famous beaten up kid in, in Saitama. In this section, this, in this, in this uh, <laughs> <Then> he, recovery <laughs> he replies, he replies, uh, I'm in the newspaper. Proving that I'm the most famous. <laughs> 14 year old kid beaten nearly to death. <laughs> Police reports say the, that both male and female perpetrators were involved in the abduction and beatings and have a, now arrested 11 people, with those arrested ranging in age from 15 to 25 and including at least one junior high and senior high school student. The, ident- uh, the identity of the 25 year old Yakuza member has been revealed as one Naoto Oguchi a personal acquaintance of the 15-year-old girl. However, as the two teens whose social media beef started the whole chain of events are both still minors, their names have not been released to the public, so the ordeal hasn't really helped either of their claims to fame. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, So we are at four hours and five minutes. Uh, If we wanted to knock out another one, we could. And perfectly on Do you guys just want to chat for a minute? (sighs) What do we want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. What are you wearing, girl? Let me ask you, uh, how far is everybody in Berserk 2017? I'm done. Zero episodes. I think I have like four left. Um, So far, I'm liking it. Like, uh, I, I, it's much more tolerable, the CG. And um, the, uh, just the overall vibe of the show is greatly improved from the first, uh, for the 2016 season. So um, I don't know. I don't have much else to say right now at this time. Anyway, anybody watching anything else? Uh, I finished watching Vivi with my mommy. With your mommy? Is that what we're watching next? I don't know. Vivi? Wait, wait, what are you watching? Vivi Floride? Yeah. Oh, I I was like, I was like, I've never heard of Vivi. We're we're going to start watching Villain Saga tomorrow. Mm, With your mommy? Make yeah, sure you point out Thorfinn yeah. and tell her about the fact that he supposedly I, I gave a girl won't. autism. I won't. Because he's going to watch the Netflix dub or something. <laughs> I'm watching Trigun watch Stampede. That? It's actually really damn good. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I'm sorry to hear that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, look, the an, look, first, the animation is what it is. I can't help it. Personally, but it's like... I'm not. I'm not feeling it. There's they're speed running it, and uh, I don't know what why. The, they're going to try and cram the entire story into 12 episodes. I mean, consider, I considering that I'm still cucked over the fact what? they never made a Blu-ray of the fucking move of the original DVD set that I'm aware of. I mean, at least they never made one in Japan and like the the uh, masters are gone or something. I realize how does this that... always come back? The but it's like Trigun at, at, at Blu-ray at least, that least doesn't strong. exist. <laughs> Because it's it's a travesty, but it's like at least with this, they're doing something with the series. Because damn, this was a good series. Also watching Blue Lock. Is anyone else watching that? Nope. Is that the soccer one? Yes. One of them. Yeah. It. I don't know why when I opened it up when I first started watching it, I was like, "Am I watching the beginning of a Persona?" 
because I was just like this. It was just the animation and everything gave me this whole like. Are you talking? About, wait, is level. Blue Lock that violin one with John Williams? As no, the no, 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 Blue no, Lock is a soccer. soccer one. Blue Lock is the weird soccer one that's like because um... Blue, uh, Blue, the John Williams starring uh, main character one is the Blue one that Lance orchestra? made comment looked like Persona Three. So. <laughs> Is that the one you're talking about? No, I'm talking no, about Blue Lock. Is, is, is there really one. a third it one? That is, that is funny. It, it is, is funny so that, every, that Lance judges anime based on how much it resembles Persona. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's just weird that another thing Where that has Blue that? in the title also looks like Persona. Well, Why, blue what is it with blue soccer X's series is... having Blue in it? We have Blue Lock <laughs> and then that Awashi series, which is like Blue Reads or something. But they, they kept it as Awashi for the English release. I'm sorry, but why is there so many blue anime like Blue Exorcist, Blue Gender, uh, Blue that. Dark can't Blue? Wait, or can't wrong. wait for Blue Balls to be an anime. <laughs> Project Blue Earth, like Blue Blue, Ocean. <laughs> blue Island, the secret of the Blue Waiter. So, uh, Continue. sorry, I'm just gonna. I'm going to showcase some merch I'm producing. Uh, uh, time so next it. podcast, we are going to talk about Berserk 2017. Uh, oh, I will do the... my damnedest. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we will, yes. but okay. So I'll probably try and read as much as what the manga covered. or what the Yeah, manga... that's, that was also my goal. I've been a grand total of not read a single chapter yet. It's pretty good. Apparently, they, they, sped, they speed ran... This segment because apparently wow, it's like, he's saying it's, sped. Like come on, <laughs> speed ran because it's been like six, maybe five volumes or something, and the one what twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen covers like four or, or something, or no, not not five. I was twenty two, like seven or eight volumes, like seven volumes for the twenty seventeen is like five or six for uh twenty sixteen. So I think it sounds like there's, they skipped some stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, random eleven. That's, you that's that, AC's right? favorite. That's AC's favorite. Uh, o face, right there, guys. Remember that mm -hmm. when you when you see that picture, you know what I that right hand's been doing. Random eleven, you made that right. Yeah. That's what were you? Made, what, what like were a you dildo in his right hand. Can you send, can you send me this picture? Can you send us this picture on Discord what, so I can? Yeah, ask? Can you send the PSD so I can include this in the thumbnail. <laughs> I mean, AC, considering like also, actually getting Berserk finished watch. I mean, if you spend like not <laughs> that's here's awesome. The, uh, that is fucking cool. <laughs> here's the katana wielding cock. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like the one picture from the for the breastfeeding bride breast where like she's alone and like her the, the baby in her stomach is like holding the bouquet. <laughs> like, yeah. you're so, holding the so here's a uh, oh. uh, this is the one I'm gonna turn into some merch. <sighs> I think it's fucking badass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's so that'll be uh, that'll be available movie. in the near future on the OCA podcast store. Uh, I think I'll call it like Cock Slayer or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's I mean, there, also we, we gotta be careful with that one because there's oh, that. Did you read it that... with a better image of me? No, I I put it through uh, the AI the upscale. AI. Yeah. What the? F Why does? Uh... So it's slightly that's off, weird. but it, I think it looks pretty good. That's weird. This is Do you think I need the double eyelid surgery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, random eleven. Well, what I want to know. Self. <laughs> random the, the, eleven. I really want to know. Like, one sec. The AI doesn't really uh, do very good jobs with squinting eyes. No, oh, apparently okay. not. <laughs> oh, that's racist. Oh, uh, what I want to know is like, what were you on to let you stare at this for so fucking long? <laughs> it's so funny that that, that Reese like was just minutes. talking about. He wanted to so make long. an image of me in the berserker armor for some reason. Yeah. yeah, like have you, well, like have your face in the berserk. I can't remember why now. Yeah, I, but I, like have... I don't know why that would be funny, but oh, I... Brad, Brad Zerker, that was it. <laughs> I I when Re I Reese's, Lance, Reese's when... up to daddy. That's that's what it is. Like I got to see you when in I, the army. When I saw hmm? uh, AC's head just 
he and he was he had the camera like right up to his chin and he was sitting <laughs> really <laughs> close. It was just a big head, so it's like, oh, that's Modoc. And, and then I had to make it. Obviously. Yes. You the had to make it. So like, do you think I should no. do you think I should post the uh these posters we've been making to Twitter? New merch <laughs> like, drop coming soon. Uh, the latest lit. one might get you some issues, but <laughs> why? <laughs> New Lord of the Rings poster <laughs> dropped. <laughs> Dear God. Mm. I'm going to Twitter. <laughs> He's I'm drunk, guys. In, his say, internet needs say to be new up. sick merch drop coming soon. Hashtag lit. As long as you post it with your Twitter account and not the OC podcast. What is going to happen? Why are you afraid? <laughs> They're just going to come after you. Like, just one asshole is going to share it, and then all of a sudden, it's like. What art are you sharing? Because now I am concerned. Because I'm not. Apparently. Apparently, Did there's you some... not pay attention when he showed the Lord of the Rings poster? No, I didn't see that one. I saw the cock one. And I saw... A... This was like three hours ago. I wasn't paying attention to that. Oh, that's on you. New hashtag Lord of the Rings. <laughs> 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 no, I, I should... <laughs> I should do it. Uh, hashtag L O T R, right? You can do both. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching the OCA podcast. Uh... <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, Lance is in charge of ending it, huh? <laughs> all right, guys. Um... <laughs> according, according, according to you, I basically don't matter. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Racist <bastard>. Hashtag <laughs> why another sequel? <laughs> Hashtag Warner Brothers slash Amazon 2.0. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, tweeting. I said tweet. All right, there it's posted. <laughs> no, it's not. Send now. God damn it. <laughs> Post it. Bam. <laughs> Did you All see right. um, Twitter uh, on the OCA podcast Twitter? Like they uh, censored the uh, tweet about the podcast. Or so like they put a warning on it. Because the really? The, Do the, you mean the, because of the filter? whore? The whore because of the, the whore. <laughs> yeah. I, I did notice that we were demonetized before we started. <laughs> I'm surprised there's no uh, sex bots in the chat. Ask and thou shalt receive. Damn. That's true. All right, probably guys, a new I'm record. Gonna, I'm gonna wrap this run. up. Uh, it's been uh, it's been interesting working this new job. Um, there's so much I want to do for the show that I feel like keeps getting put on the back burner. Uh, if I don't make that merch, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's gotta happen, right? Um, Stable Diffusion. I'm I'm needing to like learn some new techniques with it. Uh, there's a lot I don't clearly no but uh if we could like <laughs> really get stuff like that kind of just like through that pipeline quickly there'd be fresh stuff each podcast you know um so anyway uh in the future there's going to be a poll uh a, a google form where you can submit feedback on the podcast uh such things would be like uh what is the better best sort of like what could each individual bet. host or or segment, how could it be better? Uh, what's the best thing that they do that they bring to the show? All those kind of things. Uh, so those are things that are coming in the future. I just kind of want to see um, since oh, blackface is trending. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we only got two days left, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Let me just uh, let me just <laughs> share screen so you're. Uh, your lovely leader can be shown <laughs> while I <laughs> while I finish this up. Um, but yeah, I, I just I feel like with this and sort of new chapter in the podcast in my career, um, we have an opportunity to sort of tackle some different things. So I want to sort of refocus on what parts of the show are the most um, valuable 
uh, for our audience so we can sort of recalibrate and cut off some of the dead weight um, from the show. And the fact that we did a show that I thought was going to be an eight hour show in four hours is pretty fucking awesome. So give yourself a round of applause. And uh, here is the right. outro, unless anybody has something they want to say. Or, or any Later thoughts night. regarding what we should include in this poll, this this Google form? No, I, I have nothing to say. I think it's good. Anybody else? No. Not All right. my head. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm in heaven. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>